NBC Sports presents NCAA College Football. Today, from Pitt Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, an Eastern rivalry that dates back to 1916, the Syracuse Orangemen against the Pittsburgh Panthers. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Goodyear Tiempo, the all-season radio. It eliminates winter tire changeover. By Chevrolet, who invites you to come see all the new 1980 Chevrolets at your Chevy dealers. And by the Minolta XG1, the easy-to-use automatic 35-millimeter reflex camera, the automatic choice for action photography. It is a scintillating day. The temperature in the high 40s, but the sun shining brightly, cloudless sky. Good matchup. The Pittsburgh Panthers at home. It's their final home game of the season, by the way, against the Syracuse Orangemen, who play all of their games on the road because their new stadium is under construction. Hello again, everybody. Al Michaels joined today by Frank Broyles. And Frank, we talked about the offense of Syracuse, the defense of Pittsburgh. What's the key to a Syracuse win today? Will it be 50 points on the board or better defense? Well, I think, of course, they'd like to have, Al, much better defense. But since their defense has been ineffective, this in itself dictates a certain strategy to, for the Syracuse team. They've got to keep the ball, ball possession. If they can accomplish this, their defense is on the sideline, and obviously they won't play as much. And there's a technique that you use in this, uh, Al. You run high possession plays. You run plays that aren't risked at a uh, high percentage, I should say, and short passes, and keep the ball at least make one or two first downs every possession. Kick it if you can't score and start Pittsburgh deep on their end of the field. The Syracuse offense, potent as it is, will certainly have a major test today against the Pitt defense as the Syracuse Orangemen come out onto the artificial turf at Pitt Stadium with a record of five and three under head coach Frank Maloney. Maloney in his sixth year at the helm. But the Pittsburgh defense is anchored by 99 Hugh Green as you see the Panthers. A winner in their opener over Kansas then a loser against North Carolina and five consecutive victories including one over unbeaten Navy Last week, right here, 24-7, a victory led by the young freshman quarterback, Danny Marino. But let's talk about you, Green, because you're not going to find very many defensive players in the country, and he's only a junior. And he's made All-American twice. He's 6'2", two, weighs 220 pounds, and believe this, he's the fastest player on the defensive team. And he's used as kind of a big playmaker on the defense. The fans will see him today at defensive right end, at defensive left end, at linebacker. They are going to place him where they think Syracuse is going to run the football or pass so that he can be the stopper, cause the bad play, and force a kick. He is an exciting football player. Marino, the freshman quarterback, getting the start for Pitt. What about Syracuse's defensive strategy? Will that change in your opinion? Well, yes, this is a coach's strategy to use against the inexperienced quarterback. Give him a surprise defense. Do things differently. Upset him a little bit. Cause him to think and uh, lose his confidence. Anything like this is good strategy against the freshman quarterback. A lot of blitzing, you think? A lot of blitzing, a lot of changes, anything to make him misread the coverages. All right, so it's the Panthers of Pittsburgh, the Orange Men of Syracuse. Ready for action at Pitt Stadium. We'll be back with a kickoff right after this. You know, this hat is a sign of one of America's largest, most important insurance companies, Fireman's Fund. But right now, we're going to be... Pittsburgh quarterback, there is Rick Tricano. They are hopeful that he can play again this season. He'll miss today's game, obviously, and uh, probably next week's encounter. And then they are hopeful that he will be back in time for the great rivalry against Penn State December 1st. The referee today is Bill Parkinson. He's at midfield, and let's listen in for the coin toss. Hi, gentlemen, if you'll face this way, I'll introduce the two officials. Back judges, Mr. Waite. Line judges, Mr. Carroll. Lines are Mr. McGuckin. Umpires, Mr. McDonald. Field judges, Mr. O'Rourke. The clock is official on the field. I've got a coin here, a head and a tail. Who's going to call this? You'll call it. If I drop the coin, I'll retoss. Call. He calls tails. It's a tail. It's a tail. And white has won the toss. We're going to receive what's going to be defended. Stand over there, please. Up here, white. Blue. Over here, white. 
White wins the toss and will receive. Shake hands, boys. Syracuse wins the toss and the two will receive. The Syracuse Orangemen winning the toss, and so we will take a look at their very, very potent offense immediately as the Panthers get set to kick off. The breeze is not much of a factor, a slight breeze blowing as you look at the field from right to left right now at about five miles per hour. And the Pittsburgh Panthers ready to kick off. Kick off they are one. still hopeful of a major bowl bid as far as going to a bowl such as the Fiesta and Gator. Those are major bowls too. They would seem to be in pretty good shape right now with a record of six and one, Frank. I think so, Al. If they can win uh, these next four ball games, they will be a strong contender for any of those bowls. With a quarterback like Cano and also Marino, good running, excellent defense, they have a chance. Dropping back deep for the orange, number 45 is Art Monk, their great wide receiver, and then Joe Morris, the other deep man, as you look at Monk, averaging almost 25 yards per return on kickoffs and better than 13 yards on punt returns. And he's flanked by Joe Morris. Dave Trout to kick off for the Panthers. And so here we go from Pitt Stadium with the kick angling toward the far side, staying in bounds and picked up by Morris at the five, and he gets out to the 13. A break for the Panthers in that the kickoff stayed in bounds. It looked like it was going out. Offensively, Bill Hurley, the great option quarterback. Then you've got Ken Mandeville, the short yardage man. He scored five TDs this season. We've already highlighted Joe Morris, their great back. Brian Ishman, one ride receiver, number 29. And the other, Art Monk, who might make some All-America teams, number 45. He also lines up from time to time as a running back. Right now, they have him in the slot on first down from the 13-yard line. And they shift into the eye with the tailback, Joe Morris. Early after a long count, spinning and keeping. You're going to see that play a lot today. He picks up the yard. It'll be second down and nine. The men up front from right to left on the right side, John McCullum. There's their best lineman, Craig Wolfley, the right guard. In the middle, they have Joe Hodges, number 54, the center. Tony Hazan is the left guard. He's from Buffalo. Drew Gissinger, the left tackle from Parma, Ohio. And Tony Sider is the tight end, number 81, out of East Rochester, New York. We have an injured Panther. Greg Meisner, Al, the very fine defensive left tackle. Seems like he's uh, maybe hurt his leg just a little bit. So Meisner, part of a great defensive line, which is anchored by... Hugh Green, as we see it there. Green normally lines up as the left end from time to time. He's a linebacker or might line up over the offensive tackle. Meisner is the man who just got hurt by resting in the middle and Neal and Ricky Jackson is a good one, number 87. The two linebackers, Pelusi and Reichard, and then they've got Carlton Williamson at strong safety. White is a first-year starter. Sporanek at the right corner, and their best defensive back is probably JoJo Heath, number 36. So here comes Meisner, as the Panthers lose a key defensive performer, at least temporarily, on the first scrimmage play of the game. Now it's very important that uh, Syracuse make a first down because if they don't, they have to punt, and Pittsburgh would have excellent field position. It is second down and nine. The ball at the 14-yard line. Syracuse lining up in the eye about 50% of the time, and here's Morris's first carry. And you can see how explosive he is. Out to the 22-yard line. It takes no time for Joe to pick up full speed. He has explosive speed, Al, and the things that Pittsburgh coaches are worried about is that he runs through tacklers. He does not go down easily. Bill Hurley can put his name into the record book along with only two other quarterbacks by picking up 21 yards through the air. It is third down and one, and they give it to Mandeville, and he is bunched up as he tries to get... The first down at the 23-yard line. It looks like he's shy as Bill Neal, 76, was right there. So they spot the ball just outside the 23-yard line. Bill Parkinson says bring in the chain. It's going to be very close. Bill Neal is an outstanding football player, Al, but he's also an electrical engineer major and a three-plus student. And 
it's a first down. So the orange picking up the first down just barely with Mandeville carrying for the necessary yard and just outside the 23 first and 10. Sprained ankle is the official report from the bench on Greg Meissner. So a first down just outside the 23. They send Monk in motion. Hurley on a roll. Has a man wide open at the 33 yard line and it's complete. The Monk, number 45. Close to a first down. Let's, let's watch it from the end zone, but as we do, it's a rollout pass, and Pittsburgh had jumped into an eight-man line, a perfect call by Hurley. Excellent throw, good concentration by Monk, their leading receiver, receiver close to another first down. And they'll bring in the change again. Good call, Al, throwing on first down. Pittsburgh anticipated a run, jumped into an eight-man gap defense. The best thing against it, a man in motion and a flat pass. Good game for Syracuse. Hurley, a fifth-year senior, hurt in the opener last year as they measure, and it's another first down first for down. Syracuse. Hurley hurt on the seventh play of the 1978 season. Then he came back and played in one more game, but he came out of that one in terrible shape physically, so they applied for the hardship ruling, got it, and they have Hurley back in 1979 doing a great job. The, the hardship rule is you can play in only two games in any of the first five football games. If you do that, you qualify, it's automatic, and that was the case for Hurley. <clears throat> the Orange with two straight first downs at the 34-yard line. Monk in motion. And they give it to Morris, who gets it out to the 39-yard line. Hurley just did get that playoff because Monk was in motion and ran out of room. He almost ran out of bounds. They used an unbalanced line for the first time and then put Monk back in motion, and Pittsburgh adjusted their defense, left a little bit running room over the left guard. A gain of five. It is second down and five. Syracuse starting this drive from the 13-yard line. At the 39, second down and five. Monk in motion again. Hurley on a roll, looking, throwing, batted away, incomplete. Ricky Jackson, number 87 right there. He plays one end, and then you see New Green, 99. He plays the other end, but Green is involved in seemingly every play. And I guess, of course, uh, the coaches want to try to run away from Green. They have to pick on Jackson. And he, as you mentioned earlier, would be a star for any other football team. He has great ability from Florida, by the way. And Green is from Mississippi. They plucked you out of Natchez. Third down, five. The sole running back is Morris in this alignment with Monk split wide to the right. Hurley under some pressure, throwing incomplete out at the 47-yard line. Brian Ishman was the intended receiver, covered by Lynn Thomas, and so the Orange will have to punt. Brian Ishman. Very critical play by Thomas. He made a good break on the ball. The receiver was open momentarily, but he outran the football to deflect it incomplete. John White to do the punting for Syracuse. John White back to JoJo Heath. Standing in his own 20. Flag is down. White kicking into a slight win. The low kick with good distance. And he fumbles. The ball bouncing loose. And he has to come out with it. And does he is the question. But remember, a flag down at the line of scrimmage. He did come out with it as they spot the ball inside the one. But a marker down at the line of scrimmage. That was a close to being a safety. Good gracious, what a tough break for Syracuse. Illegal procedure is the call against the Orange. So it doesn't mean a thing, and they'll have to kick again. But let's watch uh, exactly what happened on this play. The kick was fumbled momentarily. Watch him pick it up right on the goal line. JoJo Heath, number 36, he, gets, he tries to get back to the one, and I guess officials ruled that he did, but uh, the play all for naught. It's all academic anyway, what happened down there, because they've got to kick again. Pittsburgh was very lucky on that play. They would be starting from the one foot line. White is averaging 37 yards a kick. And this time, instead of Heath, it's Terry White who drops back. 
for the Panthers. Another low kick, but again, good distance. White has to back up, drops it, picks it up at the 15, to the 20, to the 30, the 40, into Syracuse territory, and White in the foot race inside the 10. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. looking like an absolute genius. He had Heath back there, and then after the penalty, he puts White back there, and Terry goes all the way for the touchdown, and the Panthers break out on top. Mark Schubert to attempt the extra point, and it's good. So two minutes and 56 seconds into the game at 7-0 Panthers as we see it again. Watch White uh, fumble the ball momentarily. It was a low kick, very little hang time. Pittsburgh has a good wall set up. You could see from the, up here in the press box, it was only one man, the kick of White, had a chance to tackle him. He couldn't make the play. Terry White goes in for the touchdown. Up to that point, White had returned only two kicks all season for 14 yards. 7-0 Pitt. You survey where the land is wild and up. Jackie Sherrill, in his third year as the head coach at Pittsburgh, one time assistant at Arkansas under Frank Broyles. And played at Alabama and coached for Bear Bryant. We were very happy to have him on our state. David Trout kicking off. And Syracuse will start from the 20. So a most distressing beginning for the Orange. It looked like they had Pitt pinned inside the one and instead it's seven nothing Panthers coaches work all the time don't make mistakes on the kicking game Al the Syracuse made two one being all side had to punt it again then they kicked the ball low and had very poor coverage so the orange they picked up two first downs on their first series start from the 20 Hurley the quarterback with Mandeville and Morris the running backs and on the short count it's Joe Morris out to the 24 yard line. Mark Reichert made the stop and let's take a look again at the punt return 85 yards by White. Sometimes when you fumble the, the punt the defense re covers relax just a minute but he has a beautiful wall and then he uses good judgment and protected himself from the sideline where he could cut either way. Terry White number 23 an excellent return touchdown. From the 24, second down and six for Syracuse. Hurley pitching and fumbled and fell upon by number 47, Morris. Ricky Jackson was right there as you look at Frank Maloney in his sixth year at Syracuse. Under some fire because Maloney's had a losing record. Of course, he took over for a legend, Ben Schwartzwald, who was there for a quarter of a century. Ben was one of the great coaches of all time. Good friend of... He and his wife have been very close to me personally. Maloney, a native of Chicago, went to school at Michigan and coached there under Bo Schembechler. Third down seven from the 23. Monk goes in motion. They take care of Green, so Hurley has some time and a little bit of room, but only gets back to just about the line of scrimmage. The 23, Jeff Polusi made the tackle. So the pit defense giving up just 7.7 points per game third best in the country holding Syracuse here and again it's John White back to punt interestingly we will not see White who scored the touchdown back as the deep safety again it's Jojo Heath who fumbled he's tired yeah. <laughs> the kick is a good one far side Heath lets it bounce and out of bounds it goes at the 28. All right, Pittsburgh with a freshman, six foot four, Danny Marino. The fullback, Randy McMillan, a JC transfer from Maryland. Ray Rooster Jones, he alternates with Freddie Jacobs. Kenny Bowles is the flanker number four. And the leading receiver on the team with 27 catches is Ralph Still, 88 to split end. Our first look now at Dan Marino from Central Catholic High School in Pittsburgh in the shadow of the Pitt campus. Highly recruited, decided to stay at home. 316, 316, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038, 038
Marino with a long count. We've got a flag. Ball game number 40, Randy the line of scrimmage. But a marker thrown flag at the snap. Now, I think it's interesting to our fans to point out that colleges all over the nation are using motion, a la the Dallas Cowboys, shifting their people, trying to get some confusion and unsettling situations on the defense to help the offense. That time, they had Benji Pryor, as you see the illegal procedure call, refused by the defensive captain, the linebacker, Collins. And up front for the Panthers, you've got Bob Gruber anchoring the left side. Dan Fiddler is a good one. The left guard, number 62, in the middle is Russ Grimm. Emil Boris is the right guard, number seven, 70. It is second down and 11. Marino still getting it away to Jones, but he's tackled for a loss back at the 24. Mike Bogosian made the stop, and we'll see the rest of the line. Mark May on the right side, and then Benji Pryor, a most improved football player, and the second leading receiver on the team, and a man who you will see line up in the tight end spot, then slot himself and go in motion from time to time today. Loss of two, third down, 13. Pitt from the 25-yard line. 9-19 to go first period, 7-0 Panthers. Marino. Getting it away, but incomplete. They try to set up the screen for Jones, and the pressure was applied on Marino that time by John Kinley, who came boring in number 43. That's the one thing to stop an inexperienced quarterback. He's put a good rush. Kinley was a linebacker, has good speed, 4-7 speed, forced Marino to throw before he was ready. David Trout to do the punting. He's averaging 35 yards a kick. Slight wind in his back. His longest kick this season, 56 yards. Art Monk is back to receive for Syracuse. Calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 40-yard line. Fair catch for number 45. Art for Syracuse, it's best field position of the day. As they'll start this drive after a 35-yard kick. All resting at the 40. So the difference right now, the 85-yard run back by Terry White. First quarter, 9.03 to go, 7 0 Panthers. Goodyear Tiempo. Official. Arizona State in a must win Pac 10 battle with Stanford or Central Michigan Toledo and Temple Hawaii. Check local listings on ABC. You're looking at Terry White, who ran back the kick 85 yards for the touchdown to make it 7 0 Panthers. He plays the left corner defensively for Pitt as Syracuse takes over at the 40. First and 10, Monk in motion, and Mandeville picks up two yards out to the 42, where Jeff Falusi, number 51, is there to meet him. Falusi, a senior from Youngstown, Ohio. And has had two brothers. One just finished at okay, Pittsburgh, and a young brother on the Jeff freshman Mandeville. team. Stop number 51, Jeff Falusi, number 87, Ricky Jackson. Second down. And let's call it seven. Second down and seven, the ball is gone. Number 43. Syracuse just inside its own 43-yard line. Their third offensive series. Morris through the middle and into the pit territory and a first down to the 47-yard line. Little Joe. Little seven. Joe. He's only 5'7", 177, but he doesn't hesitate with that football. He's been very impressive so far in this first quarter. In fact, uh, Al uh, Pittsburgh busted their defense. They moved over to the wide side of the field, and they were caught uh, very short-handed on the weak side. First down at the pit 47-yard line. That's Morris in motion this time. Hurley looking and complete down to the 33-yard line. Brian Ishman, number 29, making the catch, and Hunt Thomas was right there with him. Complete number 29, Brian Ishman. Ishman, the second leading receiver on the team. Coming in, he caught 12 in the first eight games for the Orange. But give Hurley credit for that completion. He's running to the left. Now, tough to turn back, throw sidearm, hit right on the numbers. He now has 25 yards passing, so he becomes the third man in NCAA history to rush for more than 2,000 yards and pass for more than 3,000 in his career as they send Monk in motion on first down, give it to Morris. 
and he's chucked out at the 30-yard line. The other quarterbacks who rushed for better than 2,000 passed for more than 3,000. Tom Parr did it at Colgate between 1971 and 1973, and Rick Leach at Michigan between 1975 and 1978. So Hurley is some elite company. He certainly is. Good runner, good passer, good option quarterback. Second down, six. Syracuse at the pit 29. Morris. Out of bounds at about the 28. Fourth down bounds for number 58. Steve Fidel, number 58, the junior from Pittsburgh, 6'3, 249 pounder, forcing him out. Third down, six. So the ball spotted just inside the 29-yard line, third down and six. Panthers leading 7-0 with 6.53 to go in the first quarter. Hurley, his receiver fell down and it's intercepted by White at the 15-yard line. So another big play by White as the intended receiver fell down, but a marker is down. A marker is down back at the 33-yard line. Rough in the passer, looks like, Al. Personal foul, and that is the call. Personal foul. And so that negates the interception. Terry White had run back a kick for a touchdown, then the intercepted pass, but it's all nullified here as we see it again. Let's watch him. He rolls out to the right. He had unbalanced line protection so that Green couldn't put the force on him. Turns back, throws inside. Mr. Bob Worth. It was Ricky Jackson, 87, yes. who made the hit. Mr. Bob Worth, your son is at gate nine. Let's see if we can detect it right here. You cannot hit the passer in the face. That's what he called. Jackson came down across the face. That's illegal. So instead of the Panthers having it, it's first down Syracuse from the 14, and it's Morris getting down to the six. 5'7", okay, 177, he can knock a few people down. He can run with the football. But give credit to the Syracuse line, Al. They have opened up some good holes for him against the defense that's seventh in the nation. And it doesn't take Morris long to get through those holes. <laughs> with those short legs, he's running faster than we had, than he, he looks like. Joe Morris, just a sophomore from Ayer, Massachusetts, back-to-back 1,000-yard season. It is second down and two for a first down and six for a touchdown. This is Mandeville fighting his way forward for what looks to be a first down. And is. Well, that particular play, short yardage. They jumped, uh, Pittsburgh jumped into a gap eight, and uh, Hurley showed a lot of boys, Al. He just changed the play at the line, split the two guards, and made the first down. He needed two, got about two and a half, and now it's first and goal at the three as they line up in a straight tee. And it's Mandeville again. They stop him this time after a gain of maybe half a yard. Mandeville is a short yardage ball carrier. He's averaging four yards a carry coming in. And he scores five touchdowns, which tells you that they like to give it to Mandeville when they're down by the goal line. Well, he, he at fullback, you have the best shot straight ahead to the right or the left for well, the shortest distance to the goal line from where the ball is placed. Second down, goal. Hurley on a roll this time. Throwing it up. We've got a marker down in the end zone, and it's incomplete. But a flag was thrown. A lot of traffic near the back line that time. You can see Hugh Green was involved in the play. Well, Muck was the intended receiver, and uh, if it's pass interference on the offense, it's a safety. If it's uh, pass interference on the defense, it's a first down on the one-yard line. It's on the defense. Let's watch 81, the side of the tight end, falls down, gets up. Let's see if we can detect the interference. Number, number 48, Williamson, right there. I believe the interference was on Muck. Uh, 
up front. Right, number 45, who just came into the shot. First down, and a fumble. Recovered in the end zone, but I think they whistled it dead at the one. They did. Can you believe that? Oh, quick whistle. Mandeville was the ball carrier, lost it, and then you heard the whistle as Maloney looks on from the Syracuse bench. Now you picked that up perfectly. The whistle is stops the ball regardless of whether the play has stopped or not. That's it. Watch it real quick. Let's see if we can detect Mandeville. Number 41, right here. The ball is knocked out. The whistle it blown. Early picks it up and scores. No, Morris does. But they whistled it dead, contending he was down. So it's second and goal, and it's Hurley who dives in for the touchdown. So Syracuse, which might have gotten a break on the quick whistle, is able to exploit it. The advantage of having a quarterback that can run with the football. It puts a additional burden on the defense when you get close to the goal line to have to account for the quarterback. Well, that situation they didn't account for him and Hurley went in for the touchdown. That's Hurley's eighth TD of the season. And Syracuse with Gary Anderson trying to tie it up. Anderson hasn't missed this season. He's 23 out of 23. The fake. They'll go for two, but it doesn't fool anybody. Ricky Jackson is back there to tackle Jeff Fisher number eight so the orange gamble and come up short but they're within a point we have 435 to go in the first quarter it's pitch seven Syracuse six Bruce Jenner for the Minot school activities are the other half of education but are supported by less than one percent of the school budget in most communities that's the best bargain in education the National Federation of State High School Associations urges you to support high school activities which educate boys and girls with unmatched economic efficiency Syracuse trailing seven to six. Gary Anderson to kick off. Timothy Lewis and JoJo Heath back for the Panthers. Lewis, the 20. And out to the 31 yard line. Warren Harvey made the stop. Let's take a look at the extra point again. Fisher, the holder here. Yeah, he fumbled the ball. Hmm. What, the, what, you coach this in practice, Al, you, you holler fire. The quarterback should, the kicker should holler fire, pick it up, the receiver's release, and he tries to make a two-point conversion out of a bad snap. Looked initially like they might be going for two on the fake, but that wasn't the case. Fumbling the snap. And so it's seven to six with Pitt having it at the 31-yard line. First down. McMillan, all the 35. Randy McMillan. Jim Collins, number 33, by far the best defensive player for Syracuse, made the tackle. Coming up next, the second half of our doubleheader today. Most of you will see the Pac-10 battle from Palo Alto, Stanford, against Arizona State. Those of you in Philadelphia, via satellite, you'll see Temple against Hawaii from Honolulu. Second and six. Jones runs into a gang at the 36-yard line. Again, Collins is there, number 33. Collins is 6'2", 235. He's a junior out of Mendham, New Jersey. He was the team's MVP last year. We have him isolated. I, uh, Collins is a middle linebacker, and his role is just to key the football and try to get in on every play. He was in on 199 involvements last year, by far the leader of the team. Third down and five from the 36. Marino, a short drop, and then his pass out to the 41-yard line is complete on the far side. Close to a first down. Ralph Still, 88, the receiver, and we have him isolated. Still, the receiver, coming back to the ball, gets pushed back short of the first down. The official could have given him his full advancement of the ball, and it would have been a first step. And on fourth and less than a yard, Jackie Sherrill's not going to gamble. Art Monk drops back for Syracuse to receive the kick from Dave Trout. Low snap, but Trout is able to get it away. Angles it, bounces inside the 25, takes a good pit bounce, and rolls out at the 16. 
Three mistakes by Syracuse in the kicking game. We've already talked about two. That was a third one, Al. Don't let the ball hit the ground. It will roll and roll and roll. So an inartistic, in an inartistic punt, but nonetheless a 45-yard kick. When you let the ball hit the ground. Mm -hmm. Syracuse from the 16-yard line. We have three minutes and two seconds remaining in the first quarter. Pitt leading seven to six. Ishman split wide to the left. They send Monk wide to the right. And Mandeville is the sole running back as Monk goes in motion. From the 16, they give it to Mandeville, who chugs his way out to the 20. Ricky Jackson at the bottom of the pile, number 87. Tom Maven, number 76, Phil Neal. Number 87, Ricky. Jackson. Ricky Jackson, number 87. Let's watch him make this play. He's a defensive end, number 87. Just goes right through the blocker and gets involved on Mandeville, the fullback, number 41, for a short game. Second down and six. The orange from the 20-yard line in the eye this time. Morris, the tailback, Mandeville, the fullback. Ishman in motion. Mandeville. Big hole through the middle. Whistle blew before he lost it at the 31-yard line. First down, Syracuse. Ball carry number 41. Mandeville makes, made a good run on that play, Al. It was a trap up the middle, all for the fake option. Pittsburgh the defense was fooled completely. Syracuse, a potent offense, but as Maloney explains, he says, if we don't have a good day running, we're not going to win. We can pass, but not well enough to be pit. They have a little mixture, but it's not really the type of team that would uh, really hurt a team on passing downs. From the 32-yard line, Morris. Out to the 36. We mentioned it in the pregame show. They liken Morris to Archie Griffin, the two-time Heisman Trophy winner at Ohio State. Small, but powerful and very quick, very wide. And he has an uncanny ability. There's his stats so far, nine rushes. 43 yards, but he has the knack of finding the soft spot. All of these blockings, Al, are open blocking, option blocking, run wherever he sees daylight. I love that shot from our director, Jim Jeanette. Morris got lost in the huddle. <laughs> Second down, five from the 37. Burley's going to keep and gets it out close to the 42-yard line and close to a first down. Steve Fidel, 58. There to make the tackle as the clock ticks down toward the one minute mark left in the first quarter. One piece of strategy for the fans, Syracuse are using an unbalanced line about half the time, doing this purposely to widen, I think, Green away from the inside plays. That puts him wider and gives him an extra blocker on that side for pass protection. You tries to cross him up though from time to time by playing in different positions. Flopping a lot. This time they've got Green lined up on the left side defensively, and it's Morris who carries out to the 45-yard line. Again, it's Fidel, 58. Lynn Thomas, number three, in on the play, and so it is second down and six. Syracuse has gained some confidence. They're moving the ball, they're blocking the, the great Pittsburgh defense, and they're gaining confidence. Pittsburgh better watch out. Don't encourage a team when you're the, the favorite. Don't give them encouragement. 16, 27, Hurley pitching to Morris. Cuts back inside. And tackled at the 48-yard line. Carlton Williamson running him out. And the clock still running as the tackle was made inbound. So that'll do it for the first quarter. When the second quarter begins, Syracuse will have the ball at their own 48. At the end of one, it's pit seven, Syracuse six. Want to know? Terry White running back a punt 85 yards for the pit touchdown. Syracuse, meanwhile, have picked up nine first downs, nine in the first quarter, none for Pitt. It's third down from the 48-yard line, third and about four. Morris tries to spin his way free, loses the ball, and Pitt has it on the fumble. And again, it's White, number 23, who came up with it. Steve Fidel forced the fumble, but there is White who ran back the kick for the touchdown, then intercepted a pass that was negated by the penalty, and he picks up the fumble recovery here. Let's see if we can detect exactly why Morris fumbles the ball. Number 47. 
N number 58, Borowski, knocks the ball loose. I'm sorry, Fidel, the linebacker. White recovers. So at midfield, it's a first down for the Panthers, and Marino fumbles the snap and then falls on it back at the 46-yard line. So a stuttering start today for the freshman out of Central Catholic High School. 6'4", 200-pounder as we take a look at the numbers through period one. Isn't that amazing? Look <laughs> at the time of possession. That's what pops out at you. 12, 15, 2 minutes and 45 seconds. The young freshman quarterback has confidence he's got to come back and have something good happen right now. Look at that pitch side. All single digits. <laughs> Second down. 14 from the 46. Marino has some time, has Jones open in orange territory, and he's tackled at the 44. It'll be third down and four upcoming as James Collins made the tackle. Marino showed a lot of poise out. Yeah, that's surprising. Wake Forest have been the surprise team so far. Wake Forest seven and one. Going into that one with the Tigers. Third down four, Pitt seeking its initial first down. Marino gets it away, it's complete to Pryor, and Pryor is tackled back shy of the first down. Benji had the first, then went back across the 40-yard line, and we'll see where they spotted. He may have crossed them the first. He did, Al. Absolutely a good call. Let's watch Jim Collins, a linebacker. Pass responsibility, his role is to drop deep. As soon as he sees the pass dump to the tight end in front of him, he breaks up and gets involved and pushes Prow back short of the first down. So it's fourth and one, and this time they'll go for it. McMillan over the right side gets across the 40 and should have it. Mark May was the man who led the charge, number 73 from the right side, and they have the first. So the Syracuse defense, much maligned, yields its first first down. Cameron, Connor, Schaefer, and Kinley are up front. The three linebackers, Collins in the middle is the big man, and there's the secondary. Arkel Payne is their best defensive back, the free safety, number 20. First down, inside the 40. Marino protected well, looks for Bowles and cutting in front of Bowles on a crossing pattern last time, and incomplete was Pryor. They had two receivers in the same spot. I think Pryor got pushed a little deeper by the quarterback than he wanted to to try to get in behind him. Let's watch it from the end zone. You'll see that Marino's a straight drop back pass, two men out to the right, Pryor number 84, couldn't control it. Let's see what if he takes his eyes off the ball. Right in his hands, Something uh, broke his concentration incomplete. Second down and 10. Marino will put it up again. He's four out of six, and now he's five out of seven. His fire is tackled is at the 33-yard line. Mike Zunick, 48, made the tackle. The Tigers, seven more on the board. 17-0 Clemson in the second quarter. Al ben Benji Pryor is hurt on that particular play. Pryor, the tight end, really coming into his own this season as a junior. 6'5", 230-pounder out of New Kensington, Pennsylvania. He and Ralph Still have done a great job as the pit receivers. They were wondering who in the world was going to replace Gordon Too Much Jones. We have a timeout with 12.19 to go on the half. Pitt ahead, 7-6. America, what's your favorite mid-size sedan? Chevy Malibu! And what's the thing you like best about Malibu? Everything! Everything? Everything! Well, we sure do like the mileage. In the V6 engine, too. Like the ride and like the room. Like the value through and through. Like the styling, like the handling, like the panoramic view. The thing we like is everything that makes a Malibu. The 1980 Malibu, America. A fresh new size of Apple pie from Chevrolet to you. It takes a lot more than talent to light up Broadway with a show like Dancing. It takes insurance. Oh, I'm not a sweetheart. Without
without insurance protection for the theater, actors, and audience. No theater owner could risk booking a show, and there'd be a lot less glitter on the Great White Way. We're Crum and Forster, working with more than 9,000 independent agents and brokers, helping ensure the American way of life. Amazing Sugar Ray Leonard, Olympic champ, now undefeated pro. This month he goes for the big one, the WBC World Welterweight Championship on ABC. Well, Benji Pryor went down after making the catch. And assisted now from the field. So uh, apparently the injury... Let's see if we can detect exactly what happens. 84, Pryor the receiver. He's coming across the middle. Of course, he's hit by Collins first, and then the uh, Zunik, the linebacker, and I guess it just one-twoed him a little bit, you know, one-two. Benji looks like he'll be back. We'll get a report. It's third down and four from the 33-yard line. Jones has the first down. Collins again made the tackle. Ray Rooster Jones out of Pascagoula, Mississippi. Al, the big difference in this series is the coaches have very wisely let Marino drop the ball off, give him some confidence, and mainly the team confidence in him by throwing the short passes, gain that confidence. So Pitt, without a first down in the first quarter, they picked up successive first downs. First and 10 from the 28. Marino under pressure, able to get it over to Jones. And Rooster is out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. Rooster Jones. Tom Seaver. Out of bounds for number 26, Thomas Seaver. Again, good judgment, Al. They are throwing the passes, and he can build his confidence. A screen delays something that uh, will make some yardage and let the players say, hey, this freshman is good. We want him in here. Marino's a marvelous athlete. He was so good at baseball, in fact, that the Kansas City Royals made him their fourth pick in the last draft. On second and seven, it's Jones to the 22-yard line. Okay, number two, Rooster Jones. He's about four yards shy of a first. Third down, upcoming. We want Ohio State underway, and the Buckeyes rolling again. Ten nothing over the Illini. Earl Bruce has just done a great job, just a fantastic job, coming into a very difficult situation. Third down, four. At the 22. This is Artrell Hawkins, carrying for the first time in the game, gets to the 19, he is shy of the first down. Run down with number 94, John Cameron. One down. The report on Fryer. The injury to his right knee. They do not believe it's serious, so hopefully we'll see Benji back in the game at the tight end spot. In the meantime, they have Mike Dombrowski, number 82, filling in on the right side. And it's Rooster Jones getting to the 17 for the first down. So again, Pitt, for the second time on this drive, faced with a fourth down situation and able to take advantage and pick up the first. And each time they ran over Mark May, who just happens to stand 6'5 and weighs 280 pounds. I'll never forget meeting him at the Gator Bowl game three years ago when he had to start as a freshman. And May is from upstate New York, so one of them who got away from Syracuse. <laughs> Whistle sound, and a flag is dropped before the snap that time. Obviously, an offensive lineman uh, moved uh, before the ball is snapped. In other new rules, you can't snap the ball. You can't even, if you throw for a 10-yard loss, out, you can't take the play. If an offensive lineman moves after he takes his position, then the play is dead right there. If you block a kick and score with it, you bring it back and take the five-yard penalty. I had that happen to me one time. <laughs> an offensive lineman moved, we blocked the kick, touchdown. Brought it back and penalized five yards. They booed us for 10 minutes for accepting the penalty. Was there a lot of opposition to that rule? No, I think it uh, is the best rule. I really do. First and 15. Marino, this time the protection breaks down, and Danny goes down at the 28-yard line. John Cameron led the charge, number 94. So the Syracuse defense, which has been very porous this season, averaging 27 points a game, 
handling itself extremely well to this point. They've given some different looks to Marino. He's not quite sure where he wants to go with the football. On his passes, you stop yourself, you get a penalty, Al, and you stop yourself unless you make the big play. Situation definitely favors the defense. Second down and 20. Marino time again, but overshoots everybody, and it's intercepted back at the two-yard line by Warren Harvey. Harvey running laterally along the 17, and then upended, and a flag is dropped at the 22-yard line. So the interception by Warren Harvey, number three, out of Elkins Park, Pennsylvania. Al, that may be the new rule, tackling with your head. That is something that the college people put in the rule book of tackling with your head, but I'm not sure. I didn't see the, the penalty at all. There are two flags. No. We've clip got it. a clip, clip it. on the run back. Let's watch it from the end zone. Marino overthrew the receiver by at least six feet. Let's watch it to the right of your screen. Receiver was open. But there he overthrows him, and Harvey makes a heck of a catch going back to his goal line. Let's see if we can identify the person who clips. Still comes back in the left of your picture. Watch the block that Harvey does not see still. He's way over on the left coming into your picture. Wow. Mm. That's dangerous. So a couple of flags, apparently both for the same infraction in the ball back to the eight yard line, first down Syracuse. Pitt leading seven to six, 9-14 to go, first half. Monk in motion. And another penalty marker is thrown. Face mask, Al. Yep, you can see the reaction by Boyarski, yep. number 68. So this will give Syracuse some breathing room. As they march it out to the 23-yard line, the face mask infraction. And the orange with a first down. Greg Meisner, the fine defensive tackle, has not returned to the game, Al. Bucklaw is playing defensive left tackle. Vanderbilt out to the 25-yard line. Syracuse has stayed right with their game plan. Keep the ball, make some first downs, high percentage plays, low risk, do anything but kick the ball to Pittsburgh. The difference in the game for Pitt, that run back by White. Offensively, they've been stymied as Syracuse has dominated in time of possession. Second down and eight, and it's Morris. Getting out to the 29-yard line, only one other ball carrier in Syracuse history has two 1,000-yard seasons, and that would be Zonka. Michigan out in front on a field goal. Second period, leading the Badgers, 3-0. Michigan pulled out one last week. Oh, didn't they? Last play of the ball game, a 50-yard pass. They not only went to the back of the playbook, they went to the back of the rule book. <laughs> didn't even attempt the extra point. Third down and three. Early. And he's out of bounds at the 33, and that's a first down. JoJo Heath. Now Jackie Sherrill saying after watching the films of Syracuse that Hurley has very little regard for his own body. He's the type of fellow that if he needs that first down, he'll give it all he's got. And the consequences, well, we'll think about them later. Well, Virginia out on top of Georgia, 7-0 in the first quarter. Non conference game, the Bulldogs are unbeaten in the SEC. Ball carry number four. Ken Mandeville. Brought down by number 59, Yogi Joe. Gain of a yard or so. 
It'll be second down and nine. Going back to Hurley, Jackie Sherrill said he had never seen a quarterback throw his body around like Bill Hurley does. Just disregard. Well, you can see that Tricano is not the only injured member of a Pittsburgh team <laughs> this week. <laughs> Second down. Ten. Look out from the blind side. Fumble, and it looks like Boyarski has it and does. At the 27-yard line, JoJo Heath put the pressure on as Pittsburgh came with a safety blitz that time, and Jerry Boyarski able to pick up the fumble at the 27-yard line. You could see it coming now from up here. Hurley was looking to his right. Heath was blitzing from the opposite side, and Hurley had no idea that Heath was going to hit him. Let's watch it from the end zone. Hurley's rolling to the right, fakes. Let's watch it. And there is Heath, 36, strips him of the ball. What an outstanding play. 6.58 to go in the half. Panthers by a point. Take care of your car at Kmart. Our automotive service centers care. Your Kmart Automotive Center is your sound shop, too. Save $30 on this AM FM push button radio with 8 track or cassette tape player. On sale for $118.88. Match it with a pair of great sounding 5 inch or 6 by 9 three way speakers. Just $39.88 a pair at Kmart Automotive Centers across the U.S., where quality car products are Kmart priced. I love football and I love relaxing. Because for me, relaxing always includes skull, the smokeless tobacco. Just a pinch between my cheek and gum gives me great tobacco taste without lighting up. Got the sea, the breeze. Got my skull, nothing's going to make me move. Think I'll play some touch. Skull, brother. Try going smokeless. A pinch is all it takes. <laughs> the man who recovered the fumble, Jerry Boyarski. Number 68. Talk about icing up the bruise, huh? <laughs> Got it up there for the whole line. On first down, it's McMillan carrying to the 21-yard line. Randy McMillan stopped by Jim Collins. Ground level look here at McMillan, who has really filled a void for Pittsburgh. They had a lot of problems in short yardage situations last year. Went to the J.C. ranks, and McMillan's been a key part of their offense. At 230 pounds, let's watch him run the draw play. See if he lowers his shoulder. How much yardage he gets after he gets hit? About three yards. That's what a fullback must do. On second down, they give it to McMillan again, who gets inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. It'll be third down and two. SMU leading Texas A&M 7-3 in the second quarter. The heart of Bob Goodrich palpitating. Our producer, Harvard. A 3-0 lead over Brown early. At the 19, third and two. And Benji Pryor is back in at tight end. Hawkins is stopped. Cole. Artrell Hawkins. His second carry stopped at the line of scrimmage. So again, hit his face with a fourth down situation. They had fourth and one. Two drives ago and punted. Then on the last drive, they had two fourth down plays. Went for both and were able to pick up the first on each occasion. Now they have a fourth and two at the 18. They better hurry up or they're going to get a five-yard penalty. Out of the power eye, they go for it on fourth down. The fake, and then Marino throws. He's got a man open inside the 10. Number 44, Freddie Jacobs, involved in his first play of the day, making the catch and getting the first down. Courageous call. Whoop. That's confidence for a freshman in a freshman. Marino faked off tackle and threw to Jacobs in the flat. Let's watch the fake. That's what holds the linebacker. You're going to see him fake right there. Roll to the left. Jacobs, number 44, is open in the flat. Good throw right on the numbers. First down. The nose of the ball is just inside the 10, so it's first and goal, and the pitch is juggled by Hawkins, but it turns it into a small game. Artrell Hawkins. Stopped by Bob Michael and Jim Collins. Second down and goal. Second and goal. Inside the nine. 
Ball at the eight and a half. This is the toughest place to get a first down, Al. I used to hate to get a first down on the 10-yard line. That yard line is just precious to that defense. Second and goal, the power eye again. Four and a half minutes to go in the half. Marino setting up. Look at the time he has. Throws incomplete. Mike Dombrowski was there, one of the two tight ends. It looked like he could have made the catch. I still would be fearful if I were Syracuse without getting some rush, maybe on this end of the field. You can see that Marino is going to fake, and he has plenty of time to pick up the crossing in, but that quick release, did you see that, Al? How quick he just rifled the ball in, but Dombrowski could not hold on to it, couldn't control it. Third down and goal. Marino still has time. Touchdown. Ralph still, number 88. Ralph still, the Panthers' leading receiver. Let's watch it on the split screen. You'll see still number 88 coming across the middle. There was a safety blitz, man for man. Somehow, Syracuse was confused. No one covered still. Wide open for the touchdown. So still the man who took Gordon Jones' spot at wide receiver. His sixth touchdown catch of the year. Schubert's extra point attempt is good. So the Panthers are up by eight. 422 to go. First half at Pitt Stadium. It's Pitt 14, Syracuse 6. Goodyear Tiempo, official tire of the 1980 Winter Olympics, brings you Rusty Burgoyne, Lake Placid, New York. It'd be 3 o'clock in the afternoon or even 2 in the morning when they need me at the hospital. It could be raining, snowing. I've got to get there. I depend on my Tiempos. Tiempo is the rain tire, snow tire, sun tire. One tire that does it all. I think Tiempo's are the finest tire I've ever owned. Get Goodyear Tiempo, the all-season radio, and eliminate winter tire changeover. For centuries, man thought he had to incorporate all the colors in the sun's spectrum to create light. Recently, Westinghouse scientists made a dramatic discovery. The human eye sees better with light made from only three prime colors. Introducing Ultralume Prime Color Lamps from Westinghouse. Ultralume makes colors appear richer, makes textures and fine details seem clearer than ever before. Looking at things in a different light keeps Westinghouse a powerful part of your life. Next, Arizona State in a must-win Pac-10 battle with Stanford or Central Michigan Toledo and Temple Hawaii. Check local listings on ABC. In a Tennessee canal. Kicking off for the Panthers. David Trout, Morris and Monk back for Syracuse, and it's Monk at the three, falling down, getting up, but once he went down, that was the end of the play. You don't have to be tackled or touched. Down he went. Not in college football. Here is the touchdown, and you will notice how wide open still is. You'll see number three, Harvey, coming across, trailing him, but evidently had missed his assignment. Right there, you can see number three, Harvey, behind him, but he's way out of the play. Easy touchdown. And Harvey was the man who intercepted the pass earlier in the quarter, as you look at the man who just put six on the board for the Panthers. Number one! 14 to six. Pittsburgh leading. And Syracuse in a hole again at the two-yard line. Mandeville tries to get here some room. A yard or maybe two. Mark Riker. Jeff Colusi. Well, the defensive strategy here is get into a goal line defense. Very similar to what you would play if you were backed up your own two yard line, and that's what Pittsburgh is doing. All eight of them right in the gaps. On second down, they give it to Morris, and there's nothing there. So it'll be third down. And a Monday night football, a good one. Nine o'clock Eastern I'll time. The Houston Oilers and Earl time. Campbell against the Miami Dolphins. Bob Greasy is back. Nine Nine o'clock Monday. Can you imagine a repeat of last year? That's just what I was going to say. What a game they've had last year. Probably the most exciting game I've ever witnessed. Terrific football. Campbell ran wild. This time the Dolphins get him at home in Miami. Third and eight. Hurley 
keeping and spinning and getting to the seven yard line without the punt. So the clock is running. 307, 306, and counting down. And Syracuse will have to give it up. It's going to put him in very bad field position with three minutes to 254 left and Marino at quarterback. They can get another one out. John White to kick. Slight wind at his back. Jojo Heath standing at midfield to receive for the Panthers. A low end over end kick, and Heath should have a decent run back. Inside the 45, the 40, spinning to the 36. So he brings it back 11 yards to the 36, and they're in good shape. Penalty Al for Ruff, for piling on. Number 30, Ruff, piled on. And so that'll put Pittsburgh in even better shape. The kick was 39 yards, but it was a line drive, the type that you can normally run back. There's the call. First no foul against Syracuse. Coached under Johnny Majors at Iowa State. Then came here under Majors when Johnny had great success. Then Jackie spent one season at Washington State, coaching there in 1976 while Majors was winning his national championship here at Pittsburgh. And then he took over when Johnny left for Tennessee. Let's see if we can't see the penalty, detect, the, detect exactly who it was. Heath, number 36, returning the punt, gets caught right over on the boundary. You'll see that he gets pushed out of bounds. He loses his balance a little bit and can't stop. And number 30, Ruff, comes right in, piles on out of bounds. First down, Panthers. After the penalty, the ball at the 21-yard line. Jacobs to the 11 and inside the 11 he might have a first down Freddie Jacobs he and Rooster Jones both see a lot of action and Jacobs shaking up on the play now you're right McMillan 230 pound fullback has made a big difference in the Pittsburgh offense in these first seven games power runners what they had missed last year Jacobs picks up the first. First down, just outside the 10. Hartrell Hawkins to the five. Okay, number 12. Cedric Hinton came up to make the stop, number 18. How are the Seminoles doing today? Florida State unbeaten and leading Cincinnati. Seven nothing with Lehigh leading CW Post 14 nothing in the second quarter. Second down. They can't pick up a first down without the touchdown. It's McMillan for about two. Collins, 33, in on the stop. A little bit ahead of schedule. They had first and 10 on the 10 and a half, and then two downs. They picked up seven yards. You want three or try. A minute and a half to go. If they need them, the Panthers have all of their timeouts left. Pitt leading 14-6. Marino throwing and touchdown. Randy Bartola, number 31. And so D. Bartola involved in his first play of the day, and it's worth six points. Excellent call. It's a repeat of the touchdown before, just a different receiver. Dan Marino has now thrown six touchdown passes this season. Remember today his first start because of the injury to Fercano. Schubert to attempt the extra point out of Scott Jenner's hole. And the kick is good. So they take over in great field position. Exploit it. 115 to go in the half. It's 21 to 6, Pittsburgh. The 1980 Chevy Monza 2 Plus 2. Got your kind of money. It's got your kind of fun. Standard engines, a gas stretch and four. Monza is the one. Standard transmissions, four on the floor. Monza is the one. 
an EPA estimate sure to please. The mileage is 22 MPGs. But hold it now, there's even more. A big 35 is the highway score. Mazda is the one. Got your kind of mileage, got your kind of fun. Chevy Monza is the one. A good quarterback does his homework on and off the field. That's probably why the three of us are all drinking light beer from Miller. See, light's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it's less filling. Plus, it tastes great. And you know it's important to have a command of facts like that. It's mental discipline, really. You're darn right. Because if you know every position, every option, every formation, you'll never get your signals crossed. Hey, that's my beer, Terry. Oh, no, this is yeah, no, no, well, this is this one. Well, you big wait a minute. What's that? Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. I didn't feel my label. This fall is the second year of competition for 38 schools in the NCAA's new Division I AA football group. Florida A&M defeated Massachusetts for the initial championship last year, and the 1979 season climaxes with the title game December 15th to be covered by ABC. Wayne D. Bartola, who caught the touchdown pass to make it 21 to 6 as Trout kicks off a line drive caught by Morris from the two. He comes out to the 10. 15-23, upended as we take a look at the last Panther touchdown from the end zone. When you fake that close to the goal line a running play, you're going to freeze everybody. You can see how wide open De Bartola. As we watch it from the ground level, let's see what you'd do as he fakes to the tailback, rolls out, turns his shoulders. Excellent throw and good concentration by De Bartola. 1-10 to go in the half. And the Orange have to move 76 yards. Curly. Getting out of bounds, so at least he stops the clock. Losing three on the play. Steve Fidel there to drive him out. Michigan has increased its advantage. 17-0 over Wisconsin in the second quarter. Yeah, unbeaten. Scoreless with Cornell in the second. Bob Blackman, longtime coach at uh, Dartmouth, then in Illinois, and back to the Ivy League, has done a great job this year at Cornell. Second and 14. Hurley, his first bomb of the day, is almost intercepted. Monk, the intended receiver, and back there, covering was Terry White. He's been all over the field. You know, young, some youngsters, and we recognize this in coaching, just have the ability to be around the football. Some of them are around it, others aren't, and White definitely is around the football. Coming up, following this one, Stanford, Arizona State. Most of you will see that one from Palo Alto. Key battle in the Pac-10. Those of you in Philadelphia, well, you'll take a look at what the weather's like in Honolulu today via satellite. Hawaii and Temple. Danny Marino, the freshman quarterback, who's thrown two touchdown passes today. On third and 14, they'll let Morris try to pick up the first down, and he will be considerably shy. He gets back just about to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth and 10. Now we'll see if Pitt decides to take a timeout on defense, knowing that Syracuse is going to have to punt. Fourth down. But the Panthers have not opted. Correction on the score. Yale is leading Cornell 10 to nothing. Clock still running here, meanwhile. 24 23. And now Pitt takes its timeout. Now the Panthers cost themselves about 20 seconds that time by electing very late to call the timeout. And Jackie Sherrill is really upset that his captain, the somewhat, didn't follow instructions. He, the appearance that I could guess from reading his face is he told someone to go in and call timeout immediately after the third down play. That's a smart play. They wasted 20 seconds, as you mentioned. You bet they would have had 42, 43 seconds if they'd have called the timeout earlier, but right now they've got 22 seconds, and of course the punt and possible run back will lead up a few more ticks. Back deep, JoJo Heath standing at his own 38-yard line. And the punter, John White. And they lock it! Syracuse recovering. It's the punter, White, who looks for the first down, and White gets out to the 40-yard line. What a break for Syracuse. Carried for first down. 
Ricky Jackson was the man who came in to block it. Let's watch Ricky Jackson make a superior effort right here, coming from the left of your screen, number 87. Little slow kicking the ball. Watch him leave his feet, block it, but watch the kicker. White pick the ball up, react just instinctively, and make the first down. I, I, I've never seen that. I can never remember seeing that. Now. They may have found another running back. <laughs> the way White moved on that one. 11 seconds remaining in the half, and Syracuse still in possession. Miami shocking Penn State early, leading by three. Happy Valley is not particularly happy at the moment. Time out. Syracuse. Now Syracuse takes a timeout to figure out how they're going to move 60 yards in 11 seconds. Just to recap uh, that first quarter, Syracuse, Al, the first half, did a pretty good job with their game plan if they hadn't fumbled the ball. The two fumbles just gave Pittsburgh uh, opportunities that they wouldn't have had otherwise. Early from the 40. He's going to keep it, try to get out of bounds, and does. Holy that play took six out. seconds. And so we have five Ricky seconds Jackson. remaining in the first half. Syracuse's pass offense isn't what we would call a sophisticated, uh, where you drop back and you could pick the open receiver. It's more of a rollout, and it's difficult to when you have long yards or right before the half or the end of the game to, to get the men open because you, you've only got one or two receivers, and the quarterback's rolling in that direction, and you can cover them. This could be the final play of the half with five seconds remaining. It's 21 to six pit. And Morris will be stopped at the 46 yard line. Some bumping and some shoving. And the clock has run out. So it's the end of the first half of Pitt Stadium. The Panthers seeking their sixth consecutive win. Leading the orange at the half, 21 to six. Saturday on the Ropers, Stanley starts a fire and moves in with the Brooks, putting Jeffrey's fire out for good. You mean you don't want to? Maybe never again. Then on Detective School, the bait's set for a killer stocking a panty fashion show. Take it out! And it's a special night on the love boat when the captain's past catches up with him. Are you going to tell me about sex? And wants her daddy back. Then on Fantasy Island, an old flame returns to stay. I love you. And the boss gets his ultimate fantasy. Tonight. saw the scores the correct one the Michigan 17 nothing over Wisconsin at the half so the 10th rated Wolverines in good shape at halftime the University of Pittsburgh marching band under the direction of Don Howard
French to kick off as we begin the second half. That's Jojo Heath, number 36, back deep for the Panthers. And Timothy Lewis back on the five with him as Gary Anderson kicks off for the Orange. So the second half underway, it's 21 to 6 Pittsburgh. And it's Lewis who will come out to the 10, 15, and back to the 20-yard line. So the Panthers taking over there against this Syracuse defense. John Cameron, the left end, had a good first half. Mike Connors is the left tackle, number 83. They've got Chris Schaefer over on the right side. And John Kinley at right end. A four-man front with three linebackers. Mike Zunick on the outside, number 48. There's their best defensive player, Jim Collins, 33, all over the field. And Tony Siebert on the right side. Marino, as we start the second half, goes right to the air. And over the middle finds Bowles, but Bowles drops it at the 40-yard line. So Bowles was open, had it in his hands, couldn't hold it. Cedric Hinton, the left cornerback. Warren Harvey had an interception in the first half. Ike Bogosian is the strong safety, and their best defensive back is that man, Bob Arkle Payne. Second down and ten. Second down and ten. Panthers from the 20-yard line. Rooster Jones, Randy McMillan are the running backs. Marino, they protect him well, and it's complete to Jones at the 22-yard line. Dan Marino, the freshman quarterback. In place of the injured Tricano, they have Jones and McMillan, the running backs. Bowles, who dropped the pass, and still who caught a touchdown pass, the wide receivers, with Gruber, Fiddler, Grimm, Boris, and May up front. Benji Pryor was hurt in the first half, but came back to play in the second quarter and starts the second half. Third down and eight. Marino hit as he released incomplete. Marino's pass is incomplete. So three consecutive plays. Marino drops straight back into the pocket to throw as we begin the second half. Let's watch Marino drop back to pass the third consecutive time, first three plays of the half, and you'll watch his arm up in the air when Kenley, number 43, knocks it loose, incomplete, not a fumble. Dave Trout to kick it away. Not a particularly good kick, and a fair catch called for, juggled and made at the 48-yard line by Arkle Payne. Up front, there he is, Hugh Green. All-America, listed as the left end, and we play several positions. Meisner was hurt in the first half. Boyarski recovered a fumble in the first half. They've got Bill Neal on the right side, and opposite Green, Ricky Jackson, number 87. First down, Orange, and Syracuse begins the second half offensively with a legal procedure. Drew Gissinger was the man who jumped off. As you look at Pelosi, the linebacker in the middle, number 51. Mark Reichard, the other linebacker for the Panthers. And in the secondary, you've got Carlton Williamson, the strong safety. Al, uh, Syracuse had lost the ability to pass, and in the second quarter, goes with it. You automatically lose your ability to run against a good defense like Pittsburgh. The Panthers yielding only 2.2 yards per rush coming into the game. On first and 15, it's Joe Morris who gets out of bounds at about midfield. Lynn Thomas was there to make sure he did not advance any further. And right now, Morris is closing in on Jim Brown's career rushing figure at Syracuse. Larry Zonka is their all-time rushing leader. And Morris is just three yards shy of equaling Jim Brown's yardage total. Some pretty good company. Second and 12. Curly. Incomplete. The intended receiver was Brian Ishman, number 29. Incomplete. The rest of the backfield for the Panthers defensively. You saw White who ran the kick back for the score. Lynn Thomas at the right corner. And JoJo Heath, the free safety, number 36. 
He set up their first touchdown by the offense, the second touchdown, with a blitz and forced the quarterback early to fumble the ball. He also inadvertently set up the punt return for the touchdown. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Third down and 12 from the 49-yard line. Green is pursuing Hurley. And out of bounds. Art Monk was the intended receiver, but when you've got you green bearing down on you, all you want to do is get rid of the ball. You run a little fast. Yep. You definitely run fast. You green, number 99. We've talked about you quite a bit. Those of you who follow college football know that he made several All-America teams last year and will probably be a three-time All-America by the time he's done. John White to punt into a very light breeze. And out of bounds it goes inside the 20. We'll see where they mark it. They may bring it out, and they do to the 21 is where it went out. So first down for the Panthers from their own 21-yard line. Al Pittsburgh has had very little rushing yardage all year. In the first half, they rushed for 40 for 39 yards and only uh, 39, 43 passing for a total of 82. That's far below their average. And yet they lead by 15. Capitalizing on breaks. McMillan okay, number 40, turns it out to the 24-yard line. It'll be second down and seven. Chris Schaefer makes the tackle. To carry on with that, I'm sure Jack Cachero feels like that his team is getting to rely too much on the pass. And when you do, you lose the run, and then you get in serious trouble. Well, coming into the game, the Panthers, as you take a look at Clemson routing Wake Forest, Coming into the game, Pittsburgh with more yardage passing this season than running. Second and seven. And it's McMillan. All day, number 40, Randy McMillan. Not to down the by number 43, seven. John Kinley. It'll be third down and about five. All of the scores coming up on our Prudential College scoreboard, time permitting, after the game. And, of course, you remember the second half of our doubleheader today, Stanford, Arizona State for most of you, and for those in Philadelphia, Temple and Hawaii. Third, and a long four. Marino stepping away from trouble, and then throwing complete to the near side of the 34-yard line for a first down. Mike Dombrowski, number 82, making the catch. Now he showed a lot of poise. He had a rush coming from his backside, and some some receivers, uh, passes can just feel it. You can see Kinley, number 43, rushing. He sidesteps and very calmly rifles the ball right in. Good throw for the first down. The Panthers at the 34. First and 10. And on a draw. Nothing doing for Lee Bartola. That's his first carry of the day, but he's already caught a touchdown pass. Florida State having problems with Cincinnati. They looked real good last week against LSU, and sometimes you have a letdown after a big win in Baton Rouge. Bearcats leading by a touchdown in the second quarter. Second and 10. Pitt 21, Syracuse 6. 11.50 to go in the third quarter. Marino sacked at the 26-yard line. And again, it's Kinley, number 43, who got in there. The 6'2", 206-pound senior from Webster, New York. And he was a linebacker, as I mentioned earlier, with 4'7 speed. And coming from the backside, he can do damage. But Allen continued on that uh, philosophy about the run. Uh, Trapano is an option quarterback, and Marino is not. And when you fail to run the option, you can the defense can crowd you and do a good job of stopping your running game. Third and 17. Brewster Jones. Next Brewster Jones, the ball carrier. And the Panther punting unit coming in. Tom Siebert came up from the corner to make the tackle. So nothing cooking on that offensive series for Pittsburgh and David Trout to kick it away. They're starting out just like they did in the first quarter. They did not make a first down in the first quarter. This is two possessions with the win, no first down. Art Monk back to receive the kick. And Art's going to call for the fair catch at the 41-yard line. The Syracuse Orangemen will start this drive from the 41-yard line with 10 minutes 
And 44 seconds remaining in the third quarter at Pitt Stadium. It's Pittsburgh 21, Syracuse 6. Syracuse at the 41-yard line, first and 10. 10.44 to go, third quarter. Pitt leading by 15. And it's Joe Morris. Out to the 47-yard line, Steve Fidel making the tackle. Now, since the first quarter, uh, Syracuse has done very little offensively, and I think the reason is that Hurley has completed two out of six passes for a total of 25 yards. What happens is Pittsburgh defense crowds the run. Very difficult to block 11 men close to the line of scrimmage. Morris just passing Jim Brown in career yardage. At Syracuse, only a sophomore. On second down, Hurley to midfield. It appears to be just shy of the first down. Ricky Jackson came up to take care of him. And it looks like it'll be third down and less than a yard. One thing that we are missing is the outstanding play of Hugh Green. And I think simply they are audibleizing away from Green and running to the opposite side on most of the plays. Can you blame him? No, sir. I cannot. <laughs> Green, the left side defensively this time. And it looks like they may have stopped Mandeville. Okay, number 41. Kenny tried Mandeville. to get through the middle. Jeff Pelusi came up there to plug the hole, and we'll see where they give him forward progress. They put it down at the 49-yard line, and they'll bring in the chains. It was an excellent play by Pelusi. Pelusi, number 51. Let's watch him. He's a dog. It's a short yardage, and he's going to redshirt. Watch him. He times it beautifully. He shoots a gap. Watch him put his head in. And the help comes up while he's got a hold of him, and Mandeville cannot fall forward for the extra yardage. Well, you can see Bill Hurley took a close look at that. And they are shy by an inch or two. And when you're down by 15 at midfield and fourth down, and you've got a potent offense, the call is easy. And with a running quarterback, that's an extra dimension that the defense have to account for the option play. Ignore the option. Fourth down and inches. Mandeville and Morris are the running backs. Hurley will keep it himself and lunges forward to pick up the first down. That's the safest play in football for a few inches if the center is not uh, covered. Pittsburgh was in an even set out, two guards over the guards, and there was a little running room, a little daylight, and uh, Hurley just jumped right through it. In that situation, if a man does line up over the center, do you like to see the quarterback audibleize? Yes, I'd, I'd rather hand it to the fullback. First down, out of the eye from the 48. Morris. Whoa. Racked up <laughs> at the 50. There's only one person who can make a play like that. Green. Let's watch the tackle on the right of your screen. All tackle play and Green comes in and there's that arm right around the neck. Wow. You Green from Natchez, Mississippi. Mom died when he was a youngster raised by his aunt. Just a junior. Second and 11. Hurley, he's got some room. Good moves. Inside the 35, first down at the 32 of the Panthers. Terry White dropping him. You could see on that play that Pittsburgh was going to rush. They had everybody close to the line of scrimmage, and uh, Hurley just split the guards out, and that's what happens sometimes when you rush. The injured Panther was the man who made the tackle. Number 23, Terry White. So we have 8.02 remaining in the third quarter. Pittsburgh leading Syracuse 21 to 6. New Kodak Instant Color Film and the Drama Club Hayride. Oh, no. Talk about flops. Maybe not. Let's see. 
stage in a must-win Pac-10 battle with Stanford or Central Michigan Toledo and Temple Hawaii. Check local listings on ABC. Well, there's Terry White has had a lot of good things happen today and some that have not been so good. White, the injured Panther, and we'll see if we can check it out. There he is underneath. And then some of his teammates fell across his leg and many times in my experience, falling across the legs caused more knee injuries than anything else. Meanwhile, first down Syracuse from the 32 as Joe Morris tries right down and gets to the 29-yard line. Neal and Pelosi making the tackle. Pelosi in on the play again, and we have him line back, uh, isolated. Let's watch his roll. He just spots the play. It wasn't blocked, and a good linebacker forces into the line of scrimmage, and that's what Pelosi did for short yardage. Second and seven at the 29. Syracuse trailing 21-6. To Morris on the pitch. And he gets to the 23-yard line. And comes up Gimpy. Let's watch what happens to a quarterback when he runs the option play and you blitz the ends. He's going to fake the fullback up the middle and then watch Ricky Jackson hit him right there. Hurley was lucky, but quick hands allowed him to get the ball pitched back to Morris for the nice game. Hurley, he Hurley. was punished. He came out of that at least in better shape than Morris. But Morris stays in on third down and one from the 23. The fake to Mandeville, Hurley keeps, has the first down. Gets to the 16-yard line. He has really taken some shots, not only today, but throughout his career. There he is, getting up slowly. He just throws his body around, and most quarterbacks don't do that, and most coaches don't want their quarterback to do it because of the injury factor, and he was injured, as you mentioned earlier in the show, on the first series in his first game last year and was given a hardship, and this is his fifth year. Uh, playing for Syracuse. First down of the 17. Morris. Very little. About a half a yard. Report from the Panther bench, the defensive back Terry White with a sprained ankle. Incurred making a tackle. And with White out of the lineup, in the defensive backfield. Thomas, his brother, I think Lynn Thomas's brother, Wallace Thomas is in there, number nine. That's right. They've got both Thomases in there, Lynn number three and Wallace Thomas. They call him Pappy <laughs> out of Pascagoula, Mississippi. Second down and 10 from the 17. Monk is in motion. Curly. Dives to the eight yard line. So Hurley is about a yard short of the first down. Miami still leads Penn State by three. Tulane leading Boston College. Yale trying to stay unbeaten. And Harvard with a baseball score, six to two over Brown. Halftime, Dartmouth by seven. And Princeton and Penn are tied in the second quarter as are the U and Holy Cross. Third down and one. Hurley, a keeper again, the first down and out of bounds at about the two. Al, that was just perfect execution against the blitz, the corner fire. And the Hurley just kept inside. Let's watch his judgment. Here's a youngster in a split second. He's got to decide what to do with the ball. He turns right back up inside, makes a nice cut. Big play, his second big play in the, in the series after going second and 10, scrambling for nine yards, setting up this goal line thrust. First and goal, Syracuse from the two. 4.37 to go, third quarter out of the straight tee. Pitt leads 21 to six. And Hurley will keep after faking the pitch, and he's in for the touchdown. Bill Hurley, that drive, just about a one-man show. Just excellent 
performance by Bill Hurley. Well, I, I, I can't, as a coach, you fully appreciate the decisions. He had to scramble. His receivers were covered. He runs the option play three times in critical situations, keeps sidestep, darts up, and keeps the drive going with making yardage for the first down. Just a fine performance on his part. It's 21 to 12. They're going to line up for the extra point anyway. What do you think, Frank? A fake? Yeah, well, I don't know. I think they'll kick this one and then decide for a field goal opportunity and a touchdown later on. The extra point would put them within eight, and Anderson's kick is good. 4.33 to go in the third quarter. It's now 21 to 13. Here's the TD by Hurley again from the ground. On the option play, Hurley is unaccounted for on the goal line defense. No one has him. He just trots into the end zone. 4.33 to go, third quarter. It's pit by eight. Put Delta in. Take washers out. Forget about those washers you used to worry about. Once you learn, once you learn, Delta's name, Delta, you won't have to worry about washers again. Delta faucets, the name you can trust. For worry-free faucets, ask your plumber for us. Delta and Dell X faucets. No washers, no washer worries. Who's the symbol of good customer care? Mr. Goodwrench. Who stands for your GM dealer's commitment to improving service at over 6,000 participating dealerships? Mr. Mr. Goodwrench. Whose face is seen nearly everywhere? Mr. Goodwrench's. Look for him. He wants to show you he cares about you and your GM car. It's him, Mom. Keep that great GM feeling. It's Mr. Goodwrench. With genuine GM parts. Football safety is of great concern to coaches, fans, and participants. By using approved equipment and learning the correct blocking and tackling methods, the risk of injury can be minimized. The NCAA is working to prevent injury. Help us be successful. JoJo Heath back deep along with Tim Lewis. <laughs> Gary Anderson ready to kick off, but now nah, they say go ahead. And it's Heath. Going out to the end zone. Dump at the 19-yard line. So the Panthers, who sputtered in the first quarter and have been sputtering here in the third quarter offensively, will try to get something going. And Syracuse has pulled right back into it. It's 21 to 13 Panthers. That gives some credit to the Syracuse defense, which was very suspect and ineffective. You bet. Uh, up until this ball game, but they've been outstanding against this Pittsburgh offense. Nebraska leading Missouri 7-0 in the first quarter. First down out of the, from the 19-yard line. Marino pitching it back to Fred Jacobs, who has dropped out of the 22, a gain of three. John Kinley, number 43, has made his mark today and made the tackle. The Buckeyes keep rolling. The question is, can anybody get within 50 of Ohio State these days? Look at this one, Al. Cincinnati 21, Florida State 7. All the scores, time permitting, on our Prudential College scoreboard following the game. It is second down and seven from the 22 as they slot Benji Fryer and then put him in motion. And jumping off on the left side was Bob Gruber, number 64. So the play whistled dead before its inception. You, you can believe that Jackie Sherrill is fuming. They have, the Pittsburgh team has lost their momentum. They're not quite as enthusiastic as they were early in the ball game. They've had some bad things happen. They were. They have some doubt, and you can see it out as they take the huddle and they come out. Something good's got to happen for them to get that enthusiasm back. Syracuse has the momentum right now. Absolutely. Coming up next, Stanford against ASU. Most of you will see that. Those of you in Philly, Temple against Hawaii. Marino protected well to Jacobs, who makes the catch at the 20 and is out of bounds at about the 23. Well, the Panthers started the year with a win over Kansas. Then they lost to North Carolina. Then they built back up to the point where last week they beat an unbeaten Navy team. The Middies unbeaten coming in 24 to 7. 
And as you say, Frank, uh, perhaps a bit of a letdown today. They do not seem to be emotionally charged and are very fortunate to have the lead by eight at this point. It's pretty much given to them. Fumbles, punt return. Third and five. The screen is set up to D. Bartola. 30, 35, the 40. D. Bartola into Syracuse territory and tackled from behind. Cedric Hinton able to catch up with him. So D. Bartola involved in his second big play of the day. The other pass reception was for a touchdown. That was beautiful execution on the screen because uh, Marino sets it up beautifully. You think he's going to throw downfield. There was a blitz on and D. Bartolo catches the ball. Watch him stay inside. The worst thing you do on the screen is get over on the boundary and get pushed out. Finally, it gets caught from behind. 36-yard gain to the Panthers at the 40 of Syracuse. Bowles in motion. And Jacobs, the ball carrier, runs into Collins. Jim Collins, number 33, Mike Zunick, helping out. That run out uh, on that screen should have uh, fired up the Pittsburgh offensive unit again. Something like that, a big play, got, gets them in scoring territory, a little more enthusiasm. Second down and eight, 2.40 to go, third quarter, 21-13 Pittsburgh. Marino to the air on second down and eight. Looks for Still. Great catch. At the five-yard line, Arco Payne covering Ralph Still. Had it on his fingertips and able to hold on. Just a sensational play. Any way you look at it, that's a sensational throw and just as remarkable a catch. The concentration by young Ralph Still was just unbelievable. Let's watch Still. He's going to go in and force to the corner, force to the, the goal line. Now back to the corner. Watch his concentration right here. Holds on to it and controls it just before he goes out of bounds. And as the Panthers start to come up with a first and goal, they call a timeout. So they'll get this series straightened away. Marino going over with Jackie Sherrill with 2.07 remaining in the third quarter. That's Pitt's first timeout of the half. Michigan rolling, leading Wisconsin 33 nothing. So they eked one out over Indiana. No problems today. Miami still with a lead over Penn State, 13 to 10 in the second quarter. Monday night, 9 o'clock Eastern time on ABC. Good matchup. Earl Campbell and the Houston Oilers. Bob Greasy and the Miami Dolphins on Monday Night Football. Outstanding attraction this week. And again, just think back to last year's confrontation in the Dome. What a night that was. Look at the sideline shot of uh, Marino. He's about 6'4", and uh, weighs 200 pounds, and has got a slingshot for an arm. Mechanically, the coaches say he's just unbelievable for a freshman uh, in his mechanics and throwing the ball, footwork, whatever it takes. We and, well, you know, his big uh, question in the future, Frank, will be football or baseball. He may be a Heisman Trophy candidate someday if he keeps going like this as a freshman. He's just remarkable. Fourth round draft pick by the Kansas City Royals out of high school. First down goal from the five. Jacobs in motion. They give it to D. Bartola. To the four. Okay, number Collins, 31, number 33, Bartola. in on the tackle. Would you bet they go back to the pass that they've thrown twice for touchdowns in the first half? Just the halfback out in the flat after faking to the tailback is really difficult to cover in college. It, uh, you've got man to man, the fake will hold the safety momentarily. Let's see if they throw it to Jacobs this time. Line up in the power eye on second and goal. Rooster Jones looking for a block, cuts inside, touchdown. Wayne D. Bartola was the man who sprung him. So the Panthers 
ahead by only eight and stretched it out to 14. Here it is, the pitch sweep back away from the formation. De Bartola, 31, is going to throw the key block, and Rooster Jones sees daylight, and he heads for the goal line and makes it. So the Panthers with Mark Schubert lining up for the extra point. See the call. We have illegal procedure against Syracuse. So. Illegal procedure against Syracuse. That'll move it half the distance. And let's see what uh, Jackie Sherrill decides to do. They'll still go for one. Jenner holding. And Schubert's kick is good. So 43,005 looking on at Penn Stadium. The Panthers in their final home appearance of 1979. With a minute and a half remaining in the third quarter. Pittsburgh out in front of Syracuse, 28 to 13, as we check out the left side of the Panther line. Gruber number 64 and Fiddler number 62. Watch them make the technique block of reaching out and scooping and holding the the uh, blockers. And then Dombrowski number 82 makes the block kick out block and look at the hole you could drive a truck through. That's what good blocking does. Backs like to see that, Al. And D. Bartola took his man totally out of the picture. That defender never made the replay. <laughs> so Trout will kick off for Pittsburgh. A minute and a half to go in the third quarter. And the Panthers leading Syracuse 28 to 13. Art Monk. Warren Harvey are back for Syracuse. Line drive kick, Monk from the four. The 10, 15, 20. Monk to the 30 and slides out at the 31 yard line. Return for number 45, Art Monk. Tripped up for number 42, Glenn Meyer. So the Orange Men of Syracuse. Taking over from here is Tulane. Leads Boston College at the half. 33-0. Yale trying to stay unbeaten. 11 over Cornell in the third. First down at the 31. Morris. Just about back to the line of scrimmage. Ball carry number 47, Joe Morris. Moyarski, number 68, was there. Was he there? Huh, yeah. 275 pounds, nose guard, and uh, Jackie Sherrill told me that he can control the Second center and, and the middle of the line, and they just let the tackles protect wide. Second and 10, Syracuse from the 31. Under a minute to go in the period. Early looking for Monk, who makes the catch of the deflected pass. Carlton Williamson, had he been able to pick that off, that would have been six more for Pittsburgh. Let's, let's watch Monk run the pattern. He's in the wing back position. He's just slanting out in the flat. And uh, Williamson, number 48, turns and chases him and shatters him. Watch him go up. He goes right through Williamson's hands. But look at the concentration of Monk. He's an outstanding receiver. Already holds a career reception record for Syracuse. It's third down and one from the 40. Hurley is three out of eight through the air today. And the Orange pick up the first down is Mandeville. Moves through the middle. Al, as the third quarter closes, Syracuse has rushed for 183 yards, which is more than double that the other six teams have rushed in the entire game, mainly 91. That's right, because coming in, the Panthers, remember, had yielded only 2.2 yards per running play. First down and 10. Morris on a play that will close out the third quarter. He stopped at the line of scrimmage. Okay, number 
Mandeville, rather. Carrying. The officials have stopped the clock and now started it again. And so that will do it for the third quarter. It'll be second and ten for Syracuse when the fourth period gets underway. So at the end of three at Pitt Stadium, it's the Panthers 28 and the Orange 13. TV in the city of champions, Pittsburgh. Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Al Michaels and Frank Broyles as we start the fourth quarter. Pittsburgh leading Syracuse 28 to 13. Syracuse from its own 42-yard line. It's second down and 10. And Hurley on a roll. Under some pressure. He's going to keep it. And brought down at the 47-yard line. Hugh Green, number 99, making the play. Green is the type of fella who could play several positions. Look at the stats. Syracuse, 18 first downs, 10 for Pittsburgh. Rushing Pittsburgh, only 47 yards. Total offense, 174, but they've had one good drive of 80 yards and two mini drives and a punt return. Syracuse, big edge time of possession, but on the scoreboard, it's 28 to 13, Pittsburgh. Third down and six from the 47. With Monk in motion. And Hurley coming back the other way. They set up a nice screen. And getting into Pittsburgh territory inside the 40, the 30, and brought down to the 25 is the tight end, Tony Sider, number 81. Al, I can only tell you as a coach, when you screen to the tight end, he's lost. He is the toughest thing to cover in football, is a, is a throwback screen to the tight end. Watch how wide open. Let's see his acting first. He's going to block Green, then he lets him go, and then, of course, there's going to be no one here. As you'll see, Sada has one man to get away from. He's blocked by one of the linemen, and then he very wisely stays inside the boundary, makes whatever he can. Excellent call and perfect execution. First down, Syracuse at the 24-yard line. Monk in the slot to the right. Hurley pitching to Morris. And down to the 19-yard line. I agree with you. The tight end screen is a great play. Why don't we see it more often? I don't know. I, I, that's one thing I don't think my team's ever covered. They might, they, they might throw it away or something like that. But that was good at, on this last play. It was perfect execution on option play, and the only man who saved it from scoring was JoJo Heath, the free safety. He filled the hole and stopped it for a seven-yard game. But now you're right. It's a tough play. Virginia leading Georgia at the half, 10 to nothing. The Bulldogs only play well in their own conference, it seems. And they're tied for the lead in the Southeastern Conference. With four victories, no defeats. Second down and three from the 17. Inside the 15 goes Mandeville. He is close and I think just a little short of the first down. He is short. Al Syracuse is using something I haven't Walker seen in years, an eight-man offensive line. And that widens the defensive ends. They've got all eight men up on the line of scrimmage. No flanker, two running backs, and a quarterback. They've used that on short yardage numerous times during the game, and it's been very effective for them. Third down, less than one. And here they have a third down coming out of them. Yep, they sent two men wide this time on third down and less than a yard. Curly keeps and has the first down. Getting to the 13, Boyarski made the stop. He can't count Syracuse out. The Orange, they've been fighting an uphill battle most of the way. They're down by 15, but mounting a good drive here and a first down. At the 13-yard line. You've got to give this offensive unit of Syracuse uh, credit because they're going against one of the top defensive teams in America, and they've kept their poise and just stuck to the knitting, as we say in coaching. 12.55 to go. who came in to make the tackle. He was lined up as a linebacker on that particular play. Green, we started to mention before, not only plays a lot of positions defensively, but you look at him, he's the type of guy, he could be a great split end, maybe even a tight end. 
probably a basketball player. How about a fullback? <laughs> <laughs> you I name think. it. He's just a great athlete. He can strike like a culprit. Second down and seven. Morris in motion. And Hurley, quick out, complete, no. One official started to mark it at the five, and the other said, no, sir. Art Monk, the receiver. I don't know uh, really uh, which uh, one you would go by. One did call it, as you mentioned, Al, and the other called it incomplete. Let's watch it from the end zone, see if we can detect the, is it a legal pass or isn't it? Pretty close. Pretty close. I believe the man that called it complete had our view from the end zone, yep. and I believe that uh, down, it was complete. But it's third down and seven instead. Hurley turns it inside, leaps in for the touchdown. <laughs> oh, you got to like that kid. Quarterback, and as we mentioned before, Jackie Sherrill said the pit coach after watching films, he doesn't care about his body at all. He proved it on that play. Al, the scouts up in the press box had to have called that play. They went in the same formation that they went on the previous play. Pittsburgh moved all the way over, and he ran the option play back way from the short side of an unbalanced line and scored. What an effort by Hurley. So the crowd has been stilled. It's 28 to 19, and now they're going to go for two with 11.56 to go. See if he runs the option again. Monk in motion. Hurley on a roll. Throws complete for the two points to Monk. So they close to within seven. Don't count the orange out. 11.56 to go in Pittsburgh. It's the Panthers 28, Syracuse 21. Sugar Ray Leonard, Olympic champ, now undefeated pro. This month he goes for the big one, the WBC World Welterweight Championship on ABC. 11.56 to play. 28 to 21, Pittsburgh with the orange to kick off. Gary Anderson to boot it. Slight breeze in his back. JoJo Heath backs up and then lets it go through the end zone for the touchback. Once again, here's the touchdown. Watch Hurley hurdle in. Let's watch it's an option play to the short side of an unbalanced line. And the reason it's successful, Pittsburgh had moved all of their defensive men over with Muck going in motion, and it was a great call by the Syracuse staff. Who would thought you'd run an option play to the short side of an unbalanced line for 10 yards and a touchdown? 69 yards. Took them a couple of ticks over three minutes to do it. 28 to 21, Panthers. From the 20, it's Rooster Jones has a big hole, 30, and out to the 37-yard line. Gain of 17 is Rush Spitz, 15. The right cornerback made the tackle. Pittsburgh needed that particular run. They needed something to get them started again. Or a big play like that can help them. Ball at the 38, first and 10. again for a yard. Chris Schaefer made the tackle. Let's go back and see the two-point conversion the pass to Monk. Fans, watch 45. The wide receiver in motion. Pittsburgh is going to bust the defense. No one's around him. Wide open. Two points. At the 39. Clock running with 11.10 to go. Dan Marino, the 6'4", 200-pound freshman. Second and nine, Panthers out of the eye. The eye back is Jones. Collier in motion, Jones again, his third straight carry. And Rooster gets belted at the 43, loses the ball, Syracuse has it. If I saw accurately what I thought I saw, Jim Collins put a hit on that I don't, no back could have held the ball. Let's watch it from the end zone and see if 33 doesn't knock him loose from the ball. That's what we call a takeaway fumble. Number 33. Goodness, he's going to pursue right out the line, keeping leverage. Then when, when Jones turns back, wow. Oh, 
And there's the ball right out on the ground. And the recovery made by Mike Zunick, number 48. So the Orange with a first down at the Panther 43-yard line. They're back in business. And it's Morris who gets to the 40. You've got to give a lot of credit to the Syracuse team. Here's a team that has played all of its games on the road this year. Some at neutral sites, but every week it's a bus ride or a plane ride. And make sure you got your credit cards because they don't have a stadium. One is being built. They'll play under a dome in 1980, but all 11 away from home this year. The Syracuse Vagabonds with a second down and seven at the 40. Hurley. He fumbled. At the 37, loose ball, but they've got it back. Syracuse recovers. Drew Gissinger on top of it. Recovered by number 59. Coming up, the second half of our doubleheader today from Palo Alto, it's Stanford. And you'll see a good young quarterback in Turk Schoenert against Arizona State. Those of you in Philadelphia, from Aloha Stadium in Honolulu, you'll see Hawaii against a good Temple team. What a crucial down, Al. Third and four. Third and four from the 37-yard line. Hurley looking and keeping and getting to the 35-yard line. So he's short by about two. Pelosi made the tackle and a big fourth down coming up. Well, he could have run if he had just made up his mind a little faster. He'd have made the first down in a walk. But he wanted to throw. He kept looking for the throw. Once he decided to run, it was too late. So fourth down and a short two at the 35. Look at Maloney. Golly, I'm fired up myself. <laughs> Look at it. Boy, if you think he's not fired up. Yeah, there's a man who's been under some heat, some pressure at Syracuse, but done a remarkable job this year, all things considered. Five and three coming in and trying to pull off an upset today. Fourth and two. Hurley. Nope. Back to Morris. Doesn't get it. They throw him for a loss. Out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Carlton Williamson was there to make sure he couldn't turn the corner. All right, now Maloney talking to his defense as they come back in. You can't play the option play any better than Pittsburgh does right here. Let's watch the first phase, the dive back. Then the quarterback is forced out the line of scrimmage. He pitches too quickly, forced to by the excellent play of the Pittsburgh defense, not the first down. Very critical down. At the 37, the Panthers with a first down. And we've got a timeout with 8.32 remaining. 8.32 left at Pitt. The Panthers lead by seven. Three years after the birth of its women's division, the NJCAA offers championships in 31 sports. The NJCAA applauds the junior colleges for expanding opportunities for women in sports. Pittsburgh with the ball at their own 37-yard line. 8.32 to go. The Panthers leading 28 to 21. Marino giving it to Jacobs on a sweep, and he runs into a gang at the 38-yard line. A gain of one. Second and nine. Again, in on the stop was John Kinley, number 43. He's had an excellent football game. He's not very big for a defensive end, but uh, has good quickness and has been able to get involved in the pass pattern, pass rush, and also the sweeps. Second down and eight. Marino complete to D. Bartola. Out to the 42-yard line. Bob Siebert making the tackle. So it's third down and a long five. At the 42. Engine tied out on top, 7-0. Third and five, and Marino's got the first down. Artrell Hawkins stopped at the Syracuse 45-yard line. 
Well, when you drop back and send out five receivers, you're doing two things. You're forcing the defense to cover the entire width of the field. You're forcing them to cover the depth of the field. And that's why those short men open and can, and Marino can fire the ball to them for the first down. Syracuse almost gives you that short pass because their defensive backs play very soft. From the 46. Screen is set up. It's Hawkins again. He's got some moves. Gets to the 34. That's another first down for the Panthers. Excellent call. Screen that you knew that they, I think we all knew that uh, Syracuse was going to put a big rush on, and they did, and they just got fooled right inside. Good execution, and then let's watch uh, Hawkins turn inside, and then watch his little move right there. How about that? Oh, protect that football late in the game. Two hands when you get in the crowd. From the 35, Hawkins again. Buried at the 34-yard line. Clock running, six and a half minutes to play. Well, as we remember to recap, Pittsburgh scored three times the first half, once on a punt return, once on a fumble, and once on a short kick. Nothing on their own power. They moved 80 yards for their first down in this half, mostly on pass. Very little running by Pittsburgh. Second and ten. Flags are down. Two of them thrown at the line of scrimmage. And the pass complete to Ralph Still at the 22-yard line. But let's check the penalty. Illegal procedure, Pittsburgh. You know, Al, I, I agree with the coaches saying that uh, Marino mechanically is just virtually perfect uh, with his footwork, with his arm, his quick release. And any youngster watching this uh, telecast that wants to see perfect mechanics and throwing the football the next time we isolate watch his watch how tall he stands in the in the pocket where he can see and can throw over the defensive rush and when he throws the ball the eye cannot cover it it's gone his mechanics are just virtually perfect it's second and 15 from the 40. marino oh Pass was right there. Still couldn't hold on. You're not going to see that very much. You know, Still was a great high school athlete, number 88. He rushed for over 200 yard, 2,000 yards as a quarterback, over 2,000 yards passing, and is playing wide receiver. And they let him out, run his route to the open area. He can change them after the uh, defense uh, shows him what the coverage is going to be. They just leave that option up to him. There are the figures on Marino. 17 out of 24, third and 15 from the 40. They put some pressure on this time, and the pass to the 25-yard line to Benji Pryor. It is short of a first down as they spotted at the 25. So they go to Pryor and find him, but Benji is shy of the first down by a little more than a yard. He's got a rifle arm, had not you? Terrific. He just fired the ball right in, and the defensive linebackers had no chance to intercept. Fourth down out of the power eye. They'll go for it with five minutes to play, and they get it. It's Jacobs carrying to the 21-yard line. First and ten for Teddy. Where did they run? Right over Mark May. You know, uh, 280 pound offensive tackle with quick feet something you don't see very often. there he is in your picture <laughs> mark may number 73 all resting shy of the 21 cincinnati ooh, still leading florida state 21 7 third quarter time permitting all the scores on our prudential college scoreboard following the game first down from the 21 yard line marino to the air again and jacobs can't Marino hold on this time Second and one thing that Marino gives you is that great arm, but one thing that he does to, to the offense, he restricts it a little bit since he doesn't run the option plays that Trapano does. So the combination in these last three ball games that they play could be pretty effective, could be very effective. Second down and 10 from the 21. Marino loses the ball, and Syracuse has it. 
So the Orange get the break they so dearly need at this point with 4.32 remaining. Bob Marshall Payne. Now he pulls out a little bit early, and the center obviously missed his hands and threw it right back up into his stomach and result of fumble. He was a little anxious to get set up and throw the ball. Big break for Syracuse. Marco Payne recovers, and so the Orange from their own 23. Breeze at their backs. Four and a half to go. Pitt leads by seven. Curly to the 26. Curly tripped up a number eight. Gain of three. The Orange have not used a timeout in this half, so they have all three remaining. Down, Different seven. style of play by Syracuse than Pittsburgh. They don't have the type of pass offense. Now it forces you to cover the width and the depth of the field. It's all rollout passes. That's right, no home run ball. But they've got the time. 405. Second and seven. Early. Keeping again and just about to the line of scrimmage. So it'll be third down and seven. Did you see Pittsburgh's defense recover? That was a just shows the quickness, and that's Third the key down. to a good defensive team. Seven. They were Seven. circled, Seven. and they Seven. came out the line and held Hurley to a short gain of approximately a yard. Third down and seven. Lock running, 325 left. The ball at the 26. The fake. Hurley throws over the middle, has Monk open, complete to the 40-yard line and a first down for Syracuse. Why wouldn't you go to the best receiver you've got? That's what a senior quarterback does. Watch Monk run the path across the middle. He has to sidestep the linebacker, Jackson. He breaks right across the middle, and, of course, Hurley throws the ball between the linebackers where it can't be intercepted and what concentration Monk has for the reception. Controls it beautifully. Clock running, 3.03, 3.02 remaining in the game. First down, Syracuse from the 40. We had movement on the left side of the Syracuse line. Flag on the and field. a whistle. Now that's, a, I, I would argue with, a, if they penalize Syracuse, I would argue with the official. The defensive, the offensive end does not have to be stationary. He can move anytime he wants to. That is a mistake, Al, in my opinion. There was, here it is, we're gonna Look see at the again. replay. The offensive end can move, but he is legal to move. He can move, it's the five inside interior linemen that can't move once they take their place. Officials miss that about as much as they call it correctly. Maloney not particularly happy, as it costs him five and it's first and 15. Going deep for Monk, and we've got a flag. There was a wrestling match going on between Monk and Jojo Heath, and let's see who they call the interference. It on. could go either way. It could go either way. It is on Syracuse. Going against the offense. Monk and Heath were having a wrestling match as the ball was in the air. Let's watch it now. Hurley is going to scramble to the right. He buys a lot of time, and Monk is all the way down the field. He can't throw the ball that far enough, and so they have to come back. I guess he interfered with him before. Let's see on the ISO. 45, number 45, Art Monk. He tries to get behind Heath, number 36. Now, let's see what happens. See if we can detect. Yes. With his left arm pushed Heath aside, trying to make the play. Down. So back to the 20 to make it second 30. down and 30. Two thirty-three to go. Morris, whoa, that's a strange call. Okay, number 47. Second and 30. Number yeah, when you've got second and 30, you've got to gain it eight, well, what, 10 yards and a whack. Yeah. It's hard to do with a run, but uh, I guess they felt like they would, with uh, the team, defensive team rushing, they might have a chance to pop the, the blitz. 
Tried to go with the element of surprise, but they only yep. picked up four. It's third down and 26. He's open if he can get it to him. Monk. He was going to throw it. Yep. And then Monk gets tackled back at the 18-yard line. So Monk just couldn't get loose to throw it. Syracuse had, uh, was going to throw a lateral. Let's watch and see just how wide open Siebert. 32. Number 26 is down the field, but Monk could not get time to throw the ball. There would have been the touchdown. That was Haggerty going deep. Now, fourth down and half a mile. It's fourth and 32, and they send in White to kick. So they'll punt and then take their timeouts on defense. Heath's going to let it bounce. And then it's down at midfield. So Syracuse opting for the punt. They'll take their timeouts now defensively. They have all three remaining. We have a minute eight to go, and Pitt leads by seven. In a must-win Pac-10 battle with Stanford or Central Michigan Toledo and Temple Hawaii. Check local listings on ABC. The Sun Devils and the Cards in what should be a great one. Two offensive powerhouses out of Palo Alto. Coming up next for most of you, those of you in Philadelphia, you'll see Temple against Hawaii. Here it's first and ten pit from midfield. A minute eight to go. The Orange have to stop them and then call timeouts. Hawkins gets three. And now Syracuse will have to spend the timeout, and they do rapidly. That play consumed five seconds. And we have a minute three. So that's timeout number one spent by Syracuse. They have two remaining, and Pitt will have a second down and seven. Of course, Pitt, uh, Syracuse will jump right up into the gap. They've got everybody on the line of scrimmage, and uh, what you tell your team here is you protect the football. You want to make some yardage if you possibly can. Hold on the football, both hands, make what you can. Use up as much time. Jackie Sherrill going over the strategy with Dan Marino. And Collins, the linebacker and one of the captains for Syracuse. Back with the instructions from Maloney. Gets the sus suspect uh, Syracuse defense. Pittsburgh was only able to move one sustained drive of over 50 yards for the touchdown. Second down and seven from the 47. 103 to go. And it's Artrell Hawkins. And he's dropped after he gets about three and a half. And Syracuse will use another timeout. So that'll stop the clock. We have 54 seconds remaining. And it'll be third down when we come back. Syracuse. Well, there's Rick Tricano, the injured quarterback, wearing the cap of the World Baseball Champion Pirates. <laughs> enjoying, well, not enjoying, but having an off day. Hamstring fall. He'll be back in a couple of weeks. Meanwhile, third down three from the 43. They need the first down here, and they get it. It's Hawkins who takes it to the 28-yard line, and that should sew it up for the Panthers. Tom Siebert made the tackle. Our Chevrolet most valuable players in today's game, and we've had a slew to choose from. We've selected Terry White of the Panthers, number 23, the defensive back who ran back the punt for the touchdown. Bill Hurley for Syracuse. The outstanding option quarterback, Bill Hurley, keeping him in the game until the very end. There is the MVP for the Panthers, Terry White. Artrell Hawkins, the call again, stopped at the line of scrimmage, but remember Syracuse can only stop the clock one more time. We have 21 seconds remaining, and that's their final timeout. So there is Hurley. Here's Hurley's stats. He rushed 24 times for 80 yards and one TD. He passed six times, so 13 times, six completions for 72 yards. 152 yards total offense against an outstanding pit defense. You can see how distraught Hurley is, but I tell you, that man is very impressive. What a day. You got to admire that kid, too, the way he plays. 
Yeah, he's uh, he's the heart of that offensive football team, and I can see why Jackie Sherrill has been so concerned. Of course, two years ago when he played, he had a great game, even though Pitt pulled it out late in the game, and also uh, three years ago, in fact, uh, he had another outstanding game that Pittsburgh came from behind to win. <laughs> we had him all the way. <laughs> yeah. Easy, easy to say at this point. <laughs> Hardly the case, though. The Panthers are going to win it, but they had to scratch and fight and claw their way to what's going to be their sixth consecutive victory and a seven and one record going into the final three games of the year. And Danny Marino is going to give everybody another thrill by juggling the ball, but then recovering it. You really just want to fall on it now and uh, let the backs come up. And if you fall it, they could recover. That's it. So the orange out of timeouts. But Syracuse staying with them all the way. However, it's the Panthers who prevail as Pittsburgh defeats Syracuse 28 to 21. Maloney and Cheryl. Jackie coming away with win number seven. So the Panthers win it. The final score 28 to 21. We'll be right back. I'm Cheryl Teague. I feel at home in front of the camera. But behind the camera, I don't know the difference between them. Lovely maroon lounging outfit with a daring see-through back. Thank you, Patty. Our next model is the beautiful Yolanda, who's wearing a black chemise top with a white Yolanda, ruffle. darling. Wait, Victor. Remember, darling, you must uh, change from the chemise to the suite into the overnight ensemble with the black Montmartre stockings. Mr. Lafleek. What? I don't think they're going to have time to change after this into that. Maggie, my beautiful yet semi-efficient secretary. In her lifetime, Yolanda will do many things. Fall in love, have babies, get married. But nothing she does tonight will be more important than changing from the chemise into the overnight ensemble with the black stockings. Right, oh, Mr. I, uh, I guess we came at a bad time, huh? Me again? Hi, guys. Hi. 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 Yolanda? What? It's been over a year. Oh, uh, Julio. Silvio. <laughs> Yeah. Maggie, who are these people? Oh, this is Nick Hannigan, my teacher from my detective school. Yeah, mm. howdy. And this is my class. Hey, how's it going? Hi. Hi. Mm. What do they want? Oh, don't you remember? You said you wanted your security system checked out. And I told you that we could do it for nothing. Remember, Mr. LaFleek, you said Tuesday. I said next Tuesday. Oh, uh, we can wait. <laughs> Will someone please go down to the bar and get me a double Perrier? I can't stand this. <laughs> Mr. Lafleet. What? Just give us ten minutes to check it out, and I'll personally go and then get you a drink from the bra <laughs> bar. I don't care what you do, just as long as you make it fast. Yeah. All right, everybody downstairs for dress rehearsal. Out Come, ladies, ladies, downstairs, quickly. What's your sign? Oh, oh, what's <laughs> Your mind is saying let's play doctor, but your body, honey, needs a second opinion. Yolanda, why didn't you return any of my calls? Where did you get that hat? My mother sent it from Argentina. Do you like it? It's dumb, Julio. It's dumb, Silvio. Forget her. You deserve a nice girl. I know, but I want a bad one. Uh -huh. All right, fellas, now this is what we got. I wonder what my husband would do if I got into bed wearing this. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> now, 
Silvio, you're it, huh? Now, we're going to try and break in here, and you're going to try and help us. We're going to check out the security system. First, they want you to flip the Guernsey on the alarm system in there, then go up to that room and fiddle the fail safe on the Mackenzie so the alarm don't go off when we open the doors. See? And then defocus all these uh, detectovision cameras. You mean somebody's looking at me right now? Yes, if you listen close, you can hear them screaming. <laughs> all right, knock it off, you two. Come on, everybody out, everybody out but Silvio. Okay, Silvio, we're gonna give you about uh, three minutes, right? Huh? Ah, makes it a little more mysterioso with the lights out, huh? Sure. Okay, I gotta go in there, I gotta be quick. And I gotta not be scared of the dark. <laughs> Listen, you said you couldn't see me because you had to see your mother. So? So since when's your mother six foot three with a beard? I am sick of your jealousy. Now get out of here. I have to get ready for the show. Listen, you little... I don't want to see you anymore. Oh, you don't. No. Listen, nobody no. drops me. You're hurting me. That's where I burned myself. I know that's where you burned yourself. Cooking for him. I saw that, too. I'm sick and tired of chasing you all over Los Angeles. Let go of me. We are through. Yolanda? Okay, Eddie, take care of the lock here, will ya? All right, Nick. Here we are, ready or not, we're coming. <laughs> Sylvia, what happened? Turn off that alarm. What's the matter with you, you dummy? Trying to make us look like a fool. That man go come in here and think we try to rip him off. <laughs> you just like my cousin Willie. Nothing upstairs. He. Oh, I forgot my bag. <laughs> you won't believe this. He put his poodle in the washing machine. Thought it was a terry cloth robe. <laughs> The reason why I'm trying to tell you this is because you got to think before you... Ah! Uh, what? what do you got, Eddie? Huh? Nick? Yeah, we got a dead model on our hands. Oh, a dead model what? A dead model 1979 blonde. I've never driven one of those. Oh, no. What's going on here? How come all oh, the bells are ringing? I think your show's in trouble, the flake. How so? Well, just take a peek in there. I think you're gonna need a mannequin to model that negligee. Ah! My goodness! Yolanda, she's dead. I'm ruined. If word of this gets out, I should have to cancel this show. That's what I like about you, the flake. You got a big heart. Yolanda! Ah. Oh, my God! Oh, Victor! Oh. What's wrong with him? Mm, they were very close. How was she killed? With this. <laughs> Don't point, Silvio. Not polite to point. <laughs> there is your killer. That's him. Somebody call the police. All right, my darlings, let's go. We have very little time. Hold in a second, LaFleek. Your underwear party can wait. When'd you get the gun, Silvio? It's Yolanda's. How do you know? Because I saw it all through the window. The killer came in, he took the gun from her and he shot her. Then he took his fingerprints off the gun and he threw it on the floor. And you picked it up and put your fingerprints on it. Nick, I'm innocent. What do we do with the gun? I say we plant it on a wino. <laughs> Put a roof over his head for at least 15 or 20 years. <laughs> now, wait a minute. You all saw the unpleasantness between your Julio and Yolanda. Now, I say he killed her in a pit of fashion. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Sylvia wouldn't hurt a fly. That's right. I'm an extremely non-violent man. <laughs> Besides, he hadn't even seen Yolanda in over a year. Nick, uh, there's no sign of a struggle, just a small welt on her wrist. Welt? Yeah. It's not a welt, it's a burn. Huh? How do you know? 
know that if you have not seen her in over a year. Silvio, I'm your friend, but when you start killing people, I gotta draw the line. I'm innocent. I swear on my dog's life, I'm innocent. I don't want to go to jail. Silvio, come on, get a hold of yourself. It's okay, I'm just practicing for the trial. Oh. Look, Silvio, if, if you overheard the conversation, you must have seen, you must be able to identify the murderer. I can. Well, why didn't you say so? Why start trouble? <laughs> Oh, come off it. Are you telling me he's innocent? Well, now, let's see. Huh, the flake? Little gun like this. Probably leave powder marks a yard wide. Hmm. Silvio? Uh-huh. Regarde, le flic. Nothing. He's innocent. Free again. Back to being me again. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, we'll see about that in court. You are so mad. Silvio don't have the face of a murderer. If they went by faces, you'd be in for life. <laughs> Silvio, can you describe the killer? Perfectly. Good. And I suggest you call the police, invite them over, and tell them everything you know. Good thinking, Nick. Yeah. All right, allons, my pets, let us go. Come, 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 come. I'm not going, Raul. <laughs> Say again? I'm not going to narrate the fashion show tonight. I'm never going to narrate another fashion show again. <laughs> Yolanda would have wanted it that way. I am up a creek here! <laughs> I got to report a murder. Well, come on, come on. They put me on hold. Maybe <laughs> could narrate the fashion show. What? Sure you can. Remember you told me? He was a member of his debating team in high school. Maggie, I wasn't really a member of the team. I was more like a water boy in case somebody got dry throat. <laughs> uh, listen to me, kid. You'd better do this thing. I am in a band. If you don't do it, I'm going to fire your friend Maggie. That's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Maggie. Good. Now we are getting some... Oh, I forgot. Yolanda. I'm going to have to replace her. I need someone to wear the negligee, someone who is sexy, someone with a body that does not stop. <laughs> this is it. This is what? Take it out. Take it out. Throw it out. <laughs> what about her? Huh? Me, Eddie. Hmm. Well, I don't know. She looks good, but uh, uh, no I haven't problem, seen her. No uh... problem. It's all there. Uh. <laughs> and how do you know? Maggie, you remember that bikini that you wore to the beach? Yes. So do I. <laughs> really? Really. Okay, okay. That's enough, enough. Maggie, go and change. Yes, sir. And you memorize these cats and be downstairs in 15 minutes. Uh, God, I need a drink. <laughs> what kind of wine goes with bankruptcy? <laughs> yes, Detective Matterboy. I'd like to report a murder at the Lafique Lingerie Company. And I also may be able to help you because I'm the only witness to the murder. And I'm a pretty good artist. I feel I can do a sketch of him. I see. What's your name? Silvio De Salvio. Now will I know you? Um, I'll be the only one wearing a straw hat. <laughs> I'll be right there. Hello, Lafitte Lingerie Company. Silvio speaking. No, nobody's here. I'm all by myself. My friends went down to get me some lunch. I'm having a corned beef on rye. You see, in Argentina, where I come from, it's real hard to get good deli. <laughs> no, you don't know me, but I don't know you, and I'm in a chatty mood. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Who is it? Detective McAvoy, Rampart Division. 
Boy, am I glad to see you. Are you gonna see one scared banana head? Channel 4, Pittsburgh. I'll be right back, Mr. Salvio. I've got to go down and call the uh, coroner's office. Okay, I'll be waiting for you. Here, here you go, Silvio. Got your sandwich. Corned beef. <laughs> hey, look, uh, they didn't have any rye bread, so I had them put it on date nut. Is that okay? Fabulous. <laughs> hey, what, uh, what is this? That's a sketch that I'm doing of the killer. This is crazy. What? Nick, did you know that I I've got to describe everything those girls are wearing? I, I mean, listen to this stuff. For those romantic but dangerous nights, what could be more fulfilling than a penoir from the new Killer Diller collection? This diaphanous dream come true? I can't do this. What you need is their French approach, you know? Like the singer with the straw hat, Marie Chevalier. Every little bee seems to be scaling. Look, try that. It'll change your whole personality. You better do it for me, huh? We'll definitely get you off to a bank. Everybody! That came from the other wing of this building. Would want to shoot me? Nobody. What? The only person in this room that the killer wants dead is Silvio. Me? Well, wait a minute, he shot at me. Because you're wearing Silvio's hat. Huh? <laughs> I'm going home. Get down, Charlene. You're right in front of the window. See what I tell you? He didn't shoot at Charlene. He probably had her in his sights to realize she was out of season. <laughs> well, I hope you're satisfied, Mr. Dawkins. Oh, I sure am. Eddie, get out. Oh, oh, oh. Guess you're making your move, Eddie. <laughs> no. Somebody's trying to shoot me. Why? Because they think I'm Silvio. Why? Because I'm wearing his hat. Then take it off. Yeah, Leo, crawl over the window, pull those curtains, huh? Sure. <laughs> Leo, what's the matter with you? Are you nuts? Uh, well, I'm safe. He's only trying to kill Silvio. Why? I saw him. He didn't see me. Everybody in the building knows that the only person that can identify the murderer is a guy that speaks with a Spanish accent wearing a straw hat. Someone's trying to kill me. I'm gonna die. I want to live. I want to live. I'm so cranky. <laughs> you get a hold of yourself. Come on, stand up. I think I know a way out. Look, you do the narration in that, in that French accent that you did before. I'll wear the hat and I'll talk like this. Hey, what's happening, you banana? <laughs> then that way, when we go downstairs, the killer will think that I am you, and you're speaking in a French accent, and he won't know that you are you. No, I, I can't let you risk your life for me, Eddie. No way. I mean, Sylvia, he's already seen my face. He took a shot at me. He's looking for me anyway. Sure. So we got to get to the killer before he gets to Eddie. <laughs> ah! We got a picture here that Sylvia knows what he looks like. Huh? Exactly. I've been able to draw the man that I saw. That's what he looks like? <laughs> That's what he looks like to me. Even if he does look like that, it's going to be pretty tough to spot him. Why? I was just down there, Nick, and all the guests are dressed as famous killers. In honor of LaFleek's killer diller line of lingerie. And since the killer knows he can be spotted, he'll be heavily disguised. We got to find out something more. We got to know more, more about this killer so we can spot him first. Well, come on, everybody. Put your minds to it. Think. Yeah. Think now. Okay. <sighs> Well, I'm a blink. We know that, Leo. <laughs> Look, Silvio, think. Now, think, is there anything, anything else at all that you can remember that you can tell us that could help us identify the killer? Did I ever tell you about Los Angeles? Oh. <laughs> I'm talking about murder. He's talking about geography. Besides, it's pronounced Los Angeles, not Los Angeles. That's how he says it. Who? The killer. The killer pronounces it Los Angeles. Well, that's it then. Okay, Nick, we go downstairs, we talk to the people, find out how they pronounce Los Angeles. Oh, Eddie, I'm so scared. Well, what are you scared for? Look, how many people would pronounce it like that? How do you pronounce it? What? Los Angeles? <laughs> it's 
it's loaded. <laughs> Very humorous, senor. <laughs> Tell me, where are you from? Right here. <clears throat> uh, what do you mean, right here? Well, what do you think I mean? L.A. No, no. No, no. L.A. Uh, L.A. Yeah. Jersey City. Ah, ha, ha. Blackbeard the pirate and Lizzie Borden, right? Right. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, Nick Hannigan. Oh. Was Nick Hannigan a famous criminal? Oh, yeah, sure, absolutely. Don't you remember oh. reading about it? He went berserk. Killed all the students in his detective school. <laughs> uh, where were you folks from? Beverly Hills. Ah, oh, swanky. Who do you root for? The Rams. Yeah, the Rams. The Ram. What Rams? The, yeah. They, they... The way they played last Sunday. That's what I say. <laughs> um, let me ask you this. How do you pronounce Los Angeles? I pronounce it Los Angeles. Okay, okay, stay right here. Don't go away. Right here. Uh, I found the killer. Where? Where? Right there, right there. Leo, the killer's a man. Yeah, but we said he could be in the disguise. Look closely, Leo. <laughs> Is that a disguise? Look, I'm gonna follow her and see what I can turn up, okay? See if she got a sister. Yeah, uh, Bonnie. <laughs> Hey, Jack the Ripper, right? Right, Jack the Ripper. Yeah, where are you from, Rip? Uh, Los Angeles. Oh, good, good. <laughs> you come with me, I'd like to speak in private. Uh, yeah, sure. I don't care, Maggie, I don't want to hear it. Now, I've already got one narrator, and now you tell me I must have another one. I'm only giving you Silvio to narrate because he's so much better than that yicky one. I like the Yiki one. The Yiki one was cute. He has a Nebraskan accent like Henry Fender. That's the one I want, and that's the one I'm going to get. Hey, wait a minute. You can't get him. Why not? He's sick. What's wrong with him? He got Leroy's disease. What, what is Leroy's disease? Huh? I said, what's Leroy's disease? Man want to know. What's Leroy's disease? <laughs> Leroy's disease. Yeah. It's a disease of the tongue that prevents you from pronouncing vowels. Say what? Uh, instead of saying negligee, he would say niglidge. Instead of saying furrier, he would say furrrrr. Instead of saying... Don't say any more. Go ahead, let me hear you. For those wonderful and exciting lives, what could be more exciting than... Why are you reading like that? You are Spanish, why are you talking French? Why? Because I do not want to die. <laughs> let me ask you, Dillinger, do you say either or either? Either. Do you say tomato or tomato? Tomato. You say Los Angeles or Los Angeles? Either. <laughs> Attention, madame and messieurs. My unpretentious little fashion show is about to begin in the viewing room. Everybody in. Everybody in. Allez, allez vite, allez vite. Hello, darling. Ah, can Richelieu looking very well? Ah, ah. Thank you, Patty. Next, Natasha is wearing a lavender chemise, hat slip trimmed and see-through lace. It is simply murder. <laughs> you don't really think that, that he's going to take a shot at me with all these people around, do you? My darling, unless you got a silencer on the gun, you know, too risky. I'd probably wait to get outside before I shoot you. Enjoy the show. Next, we have a beige negligee with. Or be that if I put the right card in the wrong place. I'm such a banana head. <laughs> Maggie is wearing a stunning burgundy peignoir set with dashing spray of machine gold print 
across the gold. The pieces are trimmed in open layers. This nightgown is available in all the fleek shops in Rome, Indianapolis, Peoria, Poland, East St. Louis, and Russia. I wouldn't do that, Jack. It's not polite to interrupt the narrator before the show was over. How did you know? My student Margaret spotted you and told us. She used our professor's location code, using the first letters of each city, Rome, Indianapolis, Peoria. All right, Pete, so forth, till she spelled out, Ripper. And now, in a lace border, Maggie. Isn't she fabulous? Seven years ago, Honda brought the first Civic to America. Every year, we made it a little better. Until now. Introducing the new 1980 Honda Civic. We did it all over again. We added 20% more window area for better visibility, 13% more interior space for comfort, enlarge the hatch, improve the suspension without adding an inch to the overall length. Remarkable. Honda, we make it simple. I must object. Now, this is chocolate and caramel. Now, how could it be crunchy? Your Honor, we have uncovered evidence that there's something hidden inside this Twix bar. Look, under thick milk chocolate, under golden caramel, a cookie. A crunchy cookie. Your verdict? We find Twix delicious. Twix cookie bars, chocolate caramel, and a surprising cookie crunch. Jaws, the movie that terrified audiences across the country and broke all box office records, now comes to television as an ABC Sunday night movie special. Watch the television premiere of Jaws, Sunday at 8.30, here on 4. Robert, a poisoned air tank, turns a weekend scuba party into Trap's last dive. Time runs out for 240 Robert. And on Monday Night Football, last year's exciting playoff teams mix it up again when the Houston Oilers take on the Miami Dolphins. Feel what radio was meant to be. Good morning. We'll be checking with Neil Spence and Kick's Air Alert in just a minute. Here's a story that'll make your pulse pound. Kicking off another 45-minute continuous music suite. I got a $100 cash track coming up in a few minutes. Every Wednesday at 6, I count down Pittsburgh's favorite third. Another kicks pack on the line for caller number All seven. the concert info at 333-6000. Pittsburgh's favorite rock. 96. Kicks. Just how far can you go with Mobile One? Well, you can take a nice little trip around the world without an oil change. 25,000 miles. 25,000 miles without an oil change. That's how far you can go with Mobile One. In the City of Champions, Channel 4, Pittsburgh. Exciting and new. Come aboard. We're expecting you. And love. Life's sweetest reward. Let it flow. It floats back to you.
this is something for everyone Set a course for adventure Your mind on a new One step is the world's simplest camera. Even a kid can do it. Here, kid. You think kids are stupid, right? No, I just want to show how easy it is. I can make paste. Swell. Now just point it and press the button, okay? Clean your room, wash your hands, press the button. Shoot! That sharp, clear color develops in minutes. Hey, Chief, you did it. A little kid did that, huh? Yeah, get the one step. David, would you like to come over for a drink tonight? Kate. I can't believe I wrote that. I'm glad you did. Until recently, I'd never have invited a man over for a drink. It wasn't considered respectable. But this is now. And when you're serving Harvey's Bristol Cream, it's more than respectable. It's downright upright. Harvey's Bristol Cream. Say, David, are you free Tuesday? <laughs> Stack. A bill, a bill, a bill, and a letter from Vicky. Ah, take a look at the picture she sent. Oh, gee, she's grown. Uh, children have a tendency to do that. <laughs> she's almost 12. I'm turning into a lovely young lady, I must say. Well, what do you expect? She takes after her. I mean, her mother was very beautiful. And the fact that you and Vicky have the same eyes is just a coincidence. she like living in Mexico? Ah, uh, she's adjusting pretty well, all things considered. But she still feels the loss of her mother very deeply. I just thank heavens that Vicky has her aunt and uncle to take care of her. She also has you. <laughs> no. To her, I'm just Captain Merrill, the funny man she met once. You shall never know anything else. You don't plan on ever seeing her again? I'm afraid to. The hardest thing I've ever done was say goodbye to Vicky. I know if I saw her again, I'd have to say it again. I don't know if I could do that. and I have a feeling I've made a terrible mistake. Well, it can't be too serious. You are on the right ship. <laughs> yes, but everything else is wrong. Look at those people, kissing. They aren't doing it right? <laughs> They're doing it in public. Oh, well, that's what we call indoor games. <gasps> oh, this younger generation. Well, we also have plenty of outdoor games. Shuffleboard, deck tennis, ping pong. You're going to have a wonderful cruise. <laughs> well... Maybe we'll even find you a partner for the indoor games. <laughs> oh, sir. Excuse me, my, my name is Barney Briscoe, and I wonder if you can help me. Yes, Mr. Briscoe, let's see, you're in cabin... Fiesta, 131. Yes, that's right. I, um... Uh... I was wondering. Oh, about your dining assignment? Yes, sir. Let's see, you're at table... Table 32. Right. How does one... Go about playing jackpot bingo. Well, you just show up at the... Acapulco Lounge. 
Right. <laughs> you certainly seem to have all the right answers. Except one. Oh? How do you meet a lady? Oh, well, Mr. Briscoe, you've certainly come to the right place. We don't call this the love boat because we're crazy about tennis. <laughs> this younger generation. Stuart, I, uh -huh. I think I'm on the lower deck. Huh? Correct, cabin 359. And a nice cabin it is, too, sir. Oh, well, you won't find me in it very often, because I just spent nine weeks in a locked room. Boy, my mom just used to make me stand in a corner. <laughs> no, no, no. This was a jury room. I was on the Hamilton case. Oh, wow, where the wife tried to kill him three different times. That's the one. Boy, she sure seemed guilty to me, man. Well, of course she was guilty. Eleven men, good and true, knew she was guilty. Well, then how come the jury was deadlocked? Because of this...